the same shit I've been doing since day one is still the same shit I do now. If I was to yes. get big, I would do the same chest workout that I did like three years ago. Yeah, and you can be like, here, here's a link. Here's a link. You know why? Because it worked. Like it'll still work. Like mm-hmm. if I go, if I went back to be a bodybuilder, like let's say <laughs> Seth goes back to be a bodybuilder, I go back. I'm like, I'm gonna fucking be. I need to be 250 fucking pounds in 12 weeks. If I had to gain, if I had to gain 25 fucking pounds, I know exactly what I would do. It'd probably take me 14 to 16 weeks. I know exactly what I do. I'd do the same exact fucking thing I did. Two years ago. Yeah. I wouldn't, I mean, it's, it's all right there. Very, very simple. I do the same chest workout. I do the same arm workout. I do the same leg workout. I do the same back workout. Everything. I do it all the same. I can't understand how fucking people don't catch on to it. Yeah. Same chest workout. Incline dumbbell presses. Flat dumbbell flies. Dumbbell pullovers. Pec deck supersetted with dips. Finished with cable crossovers. Or if I'm working on my upper chest, instead of finishing with cable crossovers, I'm going to finish with hex presses on the incline bench or Smith machine incline barbell presses. Same workout. Yeah. Build a fucking uh, top. I mean... Same workouts. Yeah. Did you see my backflip yesterday? Yeah. First backflip I've ever done in my life. First one? You've yeah. never tried a backflip on a trampoline before? N- no. I have never either. Never. I'm not good at them, but I have thrown dozens of backflips on trampolines. No. That I was, can't do them. No. But. First one ever. Wow. I've never done it. I'm terrified of them. There was some commitment there. Absolutely. That was the big thing. Like, yeah. Like, I've never done it. Mm-hmm. Like, Hannah was like, you've never done that. I'm like, no, dude. When the fuck? Do, what would possess anyone to think that I'm like a gymnast? My shape doesn't do this. Like, get with the fucking program, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, what part of it? Does anybody think I should be doing anything from heights? No. And it doesn't matter if there's a foam pit below you. It's the same feeling whether you're doing it in the foam or on the concrete. Yeah, no, uh, no, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, and and then everybody's. I loved. Uh, I was reading some of the comments going through everything, and people were like, "Oh, tuck the knees." I'm like, "Hey guys, my fiance runs a huge. She's one of the best coaches in Western Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. I think she's told me a million times how to do it. Didn't listen to her. I'm sure as fuck not listening to you. No, this is the first time I've ever done it. Yep, I've never done it in my life." And she's like, I was like, what happens like if I like went back and started like over rotating and tucked my knees and all that thing. And then I land on my head. I don't know. I'm too, I'm delicate. I can't jump up and do it. Like I go back and then I end up. I don't, I have, why in the fuck would I ever do a backflip? Who am I trying to impress? I'm 35 years old. Just wanted to do it one time. Now I'm going to do it again because I didn't hurt myself. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to try it again. The- you're in like ninja training right now. I am. That should be on the internet. It was graceful. I feel like if I had like another like seven feet down further, I would have landed on my feet. For sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It did somehow look slow mo in real mo. I thought it slowed down. <laughs> I thought it did too. Yeah. And it was like that was the slowest, most horrible backflip I've ever seen. <laughs> it was like a. It was like a slow shift of momentum. It was. It was like all of a sudden, like it was abrupt and then like slow. Oh. Well, like I feel like you had like a lot of upper body weight initially and then the lower body weight came it over like, top it of like you. It like equaled out. Yeah. That's the whole tuck thing that people talk about. Like the second you tuck them things in, yeah. you get in there, it'll go back faster. Oh my God. They were, at the girls were dying. We were having a fucking ball. Thing was, I was like, I was like, you know, because I can... I'm getting functional, Mm -hmm. and I ran four miles yesterday. Wow. Jesus. I know. I just get in the zone. Barefoot? Fucking seventh gear. No, not barefoot. (laughs) I wear my new balances. Yeah. These big old fucking ugly feet. My feet are so awkward, it's not even funny. Yeah. Weird feet. Mm. Just 
awkward. I want to talk about him. All right. Uh, <laughs> I started talking cool. about him. Fred Flintstone brick feet. Yeah, I got them too. Yeah, they're funny looking. They're wide and flat. Wide? Flat as hell. They, I used to have big arches and then after, you know. I never did. Oh, never? No, I, I had to like go to like a foot doctor. Pata- pa- pa- Podiatrist. Yeah. Uh, when I was real young, mm. get these stupid like arches for my shoes. Oh, it hurt like shit. They didn't plastic. Fuck, yeah, they didn't fucking work. They hurt your feet. Like yeah, my like, feet are not meant to be arched, dude. And you're putting an arch in there. They're like, hey, let's change what God did to you and put an arch in there. This is this plastic thing's definitely gonna work. Yeah, I think they would cost no. a fortune. Like f- four or five hundred bucks. Yeah, never used them. Bag of dicks. Yeah. Okay, mom, I'm fucking eight, seven, eight, nine years old. I'm sure I'm going to play basketball. Let me put these arches in my feet. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. Fuck off. Flat <laughs> so, feet. Nope. Yeah, I got... Uh, and mine are just weird. My feet are just fucking weird. I hate... I can't buy shoes online. Mm-mm. I remember I bought like uh, I bought like three pairs of shoes online. And I bought them all and, only, and two of them fit. Like, I can't wear Adidas. Can't wear Nikes. I can wear some Nikes. Mm-hmm. Not all. No Reeboks, they're out of the fucking question. You got to be able to try them on though, because it's different style to style. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so I've I have only wore one pair of Nikes that lasted more than like a couple months training in. They were the basketball shoes from fucking. I remember. Years. Yeah, the black ones. Yep. Other than that, nothing. So I wear Asics, New Balance, Brooks, all the wide shit. I just ordered a pair of Nike boots. So moving on. Um, <laughs> I have a pair of those. Fuck off. These are badass. You're not going to hate them. They're not for work. They're for like an athletic work. <laughs> are they at least like a tactical boot? Yeah, it's a tactical boot. Oh, okay. I'll, yeah. I'll buy into that. I, I'll, that's what I wear every day. I was my, my 5'11s. These are fucking, they're pretty cool. Where are they at? Oh, fuck yeah. That's what I wear. I Not these Nikes, but that's yeah. what I have. Well, so I was looking, I was like running a little bit on the trails at my house this uh-huh. weekend. Yeah. And uh, I had just like my old running shoes because I don't care like what they look like. I yeah. can't, I'm rolling ankles. I needed something more support. And like instead of some of these stupid cross training shoes that aren't going to work or. Yeah. Need boots, tactical yep. boots. Yep. That's why they make these. Because I'm like on gravel filled trail. That's what I'm on. Yep. Yep. Boots. Give me a shot. That's why I wear them all the time. I don't feel comfortable unless I'm in boots. Mm-hmm. I only wear sneakers whenever I'm either outside running or in the gym. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I always have boots on. Yep. Is dibs open? Are they, are they closed? No, I think they're non-essential. Fuck. Yeah. That sucks. This is a tough time. Yeah, it is. It's really tough. Yep. Just extended the thirty another fucking 30 days down yeah. April 30th. Yep. Like, we bought food all weekend from every restaurant. Yeah. That's all we did. Yeah. I'm, 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 we did too Saturday night. Yeah, we bought it, bought it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We were, we went to different restaurants, and like, bro, you could just tell everybody's so appreciative. And I'm like, this is a really tough time. And it's like, I'm just, like, we just, anything to keep sticking money into these small businesses to make sure they don't fucking die. Yep. I'm really hoping everything's cool. Within 30 days is a long fucking time, dude. Tell you what, they were, we went to Iani's Friday night. Mm-hmm. They were fucking jam packed were they jam dude <sighs> thank god like kim couldn't get through on the phone then got through and placed the order i got there there was a line because like they have uh you can have two i think people in waiting and then the rest have to wait outside the door yeah and everyone was you know keeping their distance yeah everyone's doing their shit dude but it was amazing their phone ringing one after another when i was thank in there. god yeah like they they look so stressed because they're trying to do everything so cleanly yeah. Yeah, and over the top just to make you feel comfortable you, you, you know you'd think that everybody already does these things and they do i think i think they do i think you have to be exaggerated with it in uh in food and service and things like that so people see it because fucking asshole people coming in just yeah causing problems just causing one problems. fucking thing goes wrong yeah so like you almost have to be like here you're watching me do my hands <laughs> how can i help you you know yeah, but uh, no, it was it was cool to see them jam packed on a Friday night at five thirty, like they probably usually were. Thank God. Yeah, no, that's what I'm hoping is occurring everywhere. I really, uh, you know, the one thing that uh, I'll say it, 
Facebook is a fucking rough place to be right now. Fucking right it is. Facebook, local Facebook, Mm -hmm. like watching what my people are doing. You know, there's some good, there's some bad. There's people that just post all the information. People that post all the information, it's like you're posting it just to post it to be first Mm -hmm. whenever it's terrible information from MSM. You know, mainstream media shit. Like, it's horrible. They're just, it's all clickbait shit. It's all fucking trash. It's all horrible. They're trying, the fear is just being imposed. And I'm like, man, right now, is the last thing we need is fucking fear-mongering negativity. Yeah. We need to be informed, but dude, fucking unity. Mm -hmm. We have to be together as a community and as a country. We have to be. This is a time that Mark Cuban made made a statement. He said, what everybody is doing with their companies is going to define them for decades to come. And he's right. How you handle your people, how you handle your family, how you handle your community is going to dictate your future. That is a very true statement. How we interact with this community right now is very important to me because this community is what supports me. So us locally, I need to support as many places that are open right now, still do everything that we're supposed to, stay clean like I always do. You know, I have hand sanitizer fucking everywhere. Always have. Always. Yep. So it's like when you go to these places, you need to make sure that you're, I want to, I need to stimulate as much as I can because I'm, I'm capable of doing it. Mm-hmm. We as a company are capable of doing that. So we need to make sure that we support the fucking barbecue place all the time. Yep. They get at least three to four orders a week from us. Mm-hmm. Then you go up in, in all the restaurants, anything. Right now, we as a country need to stay unified. In Facebook, I see it happen because whenever the stimulus bill came out, it was fucking left wing, right wing, everybody, da 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 It's like, hold the fuck on. Let's stop looking at left wing and right wing and understand yeah. that we need to be one right now. The, mean, the mainstream media it, with these clickbait things almost make it so that one side will go after the other. And it's horrible for the people. Bro, I, nobody needs to be at each other's throats. No. We need to be together and understand that whenever this passes, we're going to need to band together very strongly and move on for this shit to go very well. And I, uh, uh, Facebook's a rough spot because I see a lot of it. I mean, there's a lot of back and forth stuff. There still is good on there, but motherfucker, dude, need, need, people need to be become better people than they were. Yeah. Even though, like, we're not working, even though you can't go to the gym, even though you can't do go to the park and do regular things, you need to become a better version of yourself because what you're doing right now is going to dictate your future. Mm-hmm. Your kid's bothering you? Okay, go the fuck outside. If it's raining, who cares? Get away from them so you don't freak out. Significant others starting to go at each other's throats? Get the fuck out of the house. Go into a different room. Get away from each other because this is going, you do not want to do things in your life right now that are going to build resentment and they're going to build uh, a bunch of negative feelings that will not get you anywhere in life. It is very tough, very tough. And how people as a company operate and treat their employees and how as an employee you act, this is a defining moment. This is a defining moment in our history. Like, this is no longer like, ha ha, like whether or not you believe that the virus is the worst thing in the world or not, I mean, the numbers are starting to come out and it's uh, whatever way you feel about it, we're going to look back at history that this is a defining moment that changed our country. This has affected the economy financially as Mm -hmm. as an economy. This is not a fucking economic recession. But yet, uh, uh, a medical pandemic has caused this bit of a recession. Mm -hmm. There are millions of people at home that want to go to work and want to make money and cannot. It is fucking ludicrous right now. So how you handle yourself and what you do is going to dictate the future for sure. Mm -hmm. Like all of our employees, what do we do? We sent all of our office employees home. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to. We fall under the category that we're allowed to operate. However, we said, nope, we're going to send everybody home. We made sure that everyone is set up with a home office, 
equipped with everything that they need to run everything that they do from home. Yep. People took their entire desks home. They took everything home. Mm-hmm. If they didn't have it, we got it for them. Mike and Pat set up everything for them to be able to operate from home. Skype meetings. All the schedule is different. They're fucking loving it. The only people are the shipping, and how we've modified shipping is, fuck, you name it. How, it's cleaner than it's ever been. And they, they're they probably cleaner than they've ever been, too. Mm-hmm. But these are things that are necessary in order for in these types of situations. Like, think about it, dude. Think about a concert in four months, whenever this is over. You think concert's going to happen? I don't know. How do you think that's going to go down? How do you think a concert? We've been just, we, we are right now social distancing. We, everybody was so pissed off about the Arnold, including me. Mm-hmm. I still would have fucking went. But think about this. At, now that this has occurred, what is going to happen with concerts? Because regardless of how you feel, the, the, the mortality rate of this is like 1.6%. The flu is like one point. Is, the flu is like point eight. Okay, so this is like twice as bad as the flu, I believe, from numbers I looked at on like Friday or Saturday. All right, now that's not that bad compared to other pandemics. However, we as a society, like other pandemics, like think fucking H one N one was crazy high. Either way, <clears throat> now that we know about social distancing. And all this new vocabulary that's been put in and how hard everything has been pushed upon us and, and everybody's fucking terrified. There's people wearing scuba masks at the grocery stores. Anybody seen this? Yeah, I saw it. Okay. What are we going to do about a concert? That's going to be crazy, actually, to even think about. I never thought about that. Bro, think about a concert. When you're at a concert, how fucked up are you? How many things have you touched? Everything. Well, even at... Um... <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I think the day that concerts are allowed to go on, mm-hmm. I don't think a fucking thing is going to change. Oh, so you think it's going right back to normal, bro? Like if I if if there's like a Luke Combs concert that I I like pre bought tickets for like July or August, yeah, and it's on. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, guys, yeah. you're good. No limitations. Everyone's healthy. Everyone's fucking smiling again. What happens if it still exists though? I'm going in. I'm going to that concert. I'm going hard. You think? Well, all right. Do you think it'll be packed full? I think or do you it's going to be jammed packed. Oh, bitch! I think everyone's going to be in the same fucking boat. Like, yeah, get me the fuck out of here. I'm ready to go to that concert. I need to start living life again. Okay. I, I think so. I agree. What do you? So you think we're going? We're going back. Fucking football I, games, baseball games, basketball games. Fucking you name it, we're going. I, I think other things could be affected. I think entertainment, though, is going to be... I think entertainment could be about the same as it's always been. Well, then how could anything else, other than else be affected? Like, I think at the gym, bro, or the gym that uh, Legends of Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. bro, one of the cleanest gyms I've ever been to in my life. Yes, agreed. They have kept that bitch clean as fuck since day one. Mm-hmm. They have stations set up where everybody wipes their shit down. Everybody puts their weights away. Fucking, they've always been on it. Yep. I don't think they can be any more on it than they already were. No. And the people there had such a respect for the gym. Like, I don't think it could have been any cleaner than it was. Mm-mm. And they mopped the floor almost every fucking day, too. So, like, and then I'm looking at a concert. and I'm like, man, I wonder what's going to happen here. This is going to be exciting. Yeah. Be interesting to see for Me, sure. Uh, the the way that I look at it and what I think could occur would be that they're going to influence some type of mandatory vaccine or like a heavily voluntar- voluntary vaccine, such as the flu vaccine. Yeah, that, that's that's what I could see, and that's occurring. how I could see normal life ensuing, and that is a fucking scary 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 thing Mm -hmm. because if that occurs if that bitch ain't free Mm -hmm. if the fucking coronavirus vaccine is not free then that makes me question a whole lot of things because as a businessman that would make this seem a little fucking Mm far-fetched 
because then that's a multi-billion dollar industry. Yep. So, it's, I don't know, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. We're going to see how it plays out. Yeah. I'm. Uh, do, you, do you think that, like that they're going to require a vaccine, or do you think another option is going to be like, hey, we're going to put on this concert, but it's like an, you can attend at your own risk type of thing? Oh, you fuck know what yeah. I mean? Everything will be back to that. I think that, yeah. bro, the, listen, the American people love to work. We're known, American people are known to be hardworking motherfuckers. That's what we are. Bro, since early 1900s, just been building fucking cities. The, the hardest working motherfuckers in the game. That's what America's known for. That's what's prided myself. My dad building a business. We're talking about men that don't know anything but to work. Are at home right now with their families. More than they've ever been in their entire lives. Because men are built for fucking work. Most blue collar men are very similar to me. Because I, I am one. Work 10 to 14 hours a day. Normal job, side jobs. You own the business, you're self-employed, contractors, you name it. They work 8 to 16 hours a motherfucking day. And now they're not allowed to do that. Guys that have done that for 20-some years. This is the country full of hardworking motherfuckers. And now they're told not to go. Oh, man. They're going to go back. They are right now. I think that there is a mass number of people that would love to just go back to work and say, fuck this thing. But then they also understand that they don't want the elder population to get sick. They don't want the immune deficient people to get sick. But it's, um, you know, there's so many fucking there's so many things that come into play here. It's scary. Yet <clears throat> this is the situation we're in. But that's the part where these people, these the, like the hardworking motherfuckers of America, I think that whenever we get back, everybody's going harder because I know one thing. I, I, I never did take for granted anybody in my community because as a small business owner in a community and having no money previously in my life, I know what all these things feel like. I know what it's like to live paycheck to paycheck. I know what it's like to live in debt just as you do. Yep. We all know these things, and that's why playing a role in this community was such a big thing for us. And now that I, I do have what I have, stimulate the economy. What can we do? Bro, I, I, you know, there's no matter how big someone thinks the big business is, it always needs help. Like car dealers are already fucking hurting. Mm -hmm. Car dealers are freaking out because people were like, bro, there's fucking look at victory. How many brand new fucking vehicles do they have on that lot? Hundreds. Hundreds. Mm -hmm. Hundreds. I bought in four fucking vehicles from Victory. Treat me like fucking gold there. The Jeep, both my trucks, and Hannah's old car. Mm -hmm. Okay? They have hundreds of brand new vehicles. Everybody was buying fucking Jeeps. Everybody was buying trucks. All stopped. You mean to tell me 60 days of no fucking vehicles being purchased? Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh my god. That's insane. In a in a season where 2020s are going out and 2021s are supposed to be coming in, supposed to be flipping inventory right now, spring sales, everyone's yep. buying cars in the spring. Yes. Yes. Crazy. I already saw commercials for fucking for leasing opportunities and trying to incentivize people to do this. Yeah. I'm like, holy fuck, dude, this is crazy. This is this is what I mean. It hits every single different level. Mm -hmm. Whether you own a big business or a small business, it's going to hit you because our people in our community are employed by these companies. Everybody's getting hit. And the stimulus package was very important to occur, especially now that he just extended to, into April 30th. Yeah. Because he said death rate's going to happen in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, fuck, dude. It's crazy. It is. So many different intricate workings. And I just want to make sure that, uh, I mean, we do what we can. And I, I encourage everybody to be their best self. Be the best motherfucker you can be, dude. In everything you do, you got to be fucking... Do not lose the mentality that we have driven so hard of being a hardworking motherfucker. Yeah. Do not lose that. Teach your kids something new. Do things with them. 
like yesterday when I was with the kids, I have to be a goofy fuck. You have to. You have to let everything loose. You have to be your best person ever. Because whenever we come out of this, it's, it's ball is fucking deep again. Yep. So make sure you don't 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 squander this. No. And find and the good in it. Stay busy with it. Yes. Do 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 the fucking projects at your house that don't cost you a whole lot of money that keep you busy. Get the kids involved. Get the wife involved. Paint that extra bedroom that she's been telling you to paint for how many fucking years. Yeah. You know, because that's what I'm going to start doing at my house. Because if I don't, I'm going to go batshit crazy. Yes. I, you just can't. You, I have to stay working. Whether this was occurring or not, that's what I have to do on the weekends and in the summertime and in my evenings. If I'm not busy all the time, my head just doesn't work right. I was built to work. Mm-hmm. Just like everyone in America was. Yes. So just stay busy. Yeah. Yeah, do... Uh, can't stress it enough. And in mm-hmm. our Facebook group and the Axe and Sledge Facebook group and the Demo Crew Facebook group, everybody's doing an outstanding job. Yeah, for sure. And everybody that's listening, it's like just keep pushing every fucking day. Mm-hmm. You got to get on a routine and you got to be be the best motherfucker you can be. Mm-hmm. I'm running for Christ's sakes. <laughs> it's a really good time, I think, to work on like better habits, with uh, especially with your shit. Like, personal, like, personal, yeah, personal habits. Eating, dieting. Like I know... The whole dieting thing's kind of like out the window based on what you can get and what you can't buy and doing all that ba- shit. I'm doing a really bad job of it. But just, I don't know, it's a good opportunity to make some personal changes for yourself. Absolutely. Yep. Fucking running. Running? I, I might read a book. Fuck. I read a book, everybody better watch out. It means I'm going to get way smarter. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've only read like five books my entire life. <laughs> Like you come in after you're like you've read like <laughs> ten pages. I I don't even know what it is, but you have like this whole like new like come in like I don't know glasses on and fucking <laughs> pocket protector. Great, Seth read another book in a book. <laughs> I like to break a mental sweat too, Bob. <laughs> oh fuck! Well, I don't even know. We didn't do an intro. Oh, no, no. just went into it. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the HWMF Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Ferrosi, with my heterosexual life mate, Bob. Good morning. <clears throat> yeah, this is... I I don't know. This uh, this whole thing has slowed so many things that... So I'm running. I'm still eating way too many snacks. That's one thing that's staying consistent. Do you think you're subconsciously running for, like... Office? <laughs> No, I didn't know if like whatever, you're, however you're feeling mentally is being personified through like you running. No, I think I took seventh gear and my legs can't stop moving. <laughs> no, he finished finished uh, Tiger King and thinks he can run for governor now. Yeah. There we go. Definitely can run for governor. I, you know, whenever I was uh, uh, whenever I was younger, I'm I'm very into politics. I, er, anybody that doesn't know, I don't voice my opinion about politics too much. But uh, very into them. I've followed them for fucking ever. Like, forever. My dad owns a small business. Obviously, I've said that a million times. But he's always been into politics because of how it affects his business. So, uh, I've been into him forever. And I still am heavily involved in the day. I follow everything about it. Right wing, left wing, down the middle, you name it. I've, I've, um, I'm, I do a ton of research on it. Let's put it that way. But anyway... I used to think about it whenever I was younger, about what it would be like to run for office. Mm -hmm. And then whenever uh, whenever I saw watch the Tiger King and that happened, I'm like, oh my fucking god! Like, how did how did we not hear about him running? Or we did see something brief, but just brushed it under the rug, like, oh, here's another fucking numb nut running for running for yeah, he ran for president. He was on. Uh, what, what's the HBO? John Oliver. John Oliver, yeah. Uh, that's definitely, I think, how it went down. Like, we all probably saw it or heard it somewhere. It was like, oh, just another fucking... I'm broke as shit. <laughs> I am not changing the way I dress. I've had some kinky sex. <laughs> Did you know, like, he he's not singing those songs in those music videos? What do you mean? I saw, I, I saw a post that he's not singing those songs like someone else sings those songs and he just lip syncs <laughs> yes <laughs> nice, dude 
nice. What I, a fucking I'd move. like to double check that then. I'm really disappointed if that's true. I'd like to do- I swear I saw a headline that said that. Like Bro. Joe Exotic does not sing his own songs. All right, so Tiger King. If you have not watched Tiger King on Netflix, you fucking have to watch it. I watched the whole series. Hannah and I got sucked in. We binge watched five episodes. But uh, it is. What do you got <laughs> it there? Says he does, he didn't, didn't even, write any of the songs, and he didn't even sing on most of them. This motherfucker is the most outrageous thing I've ever seen in my life. This dude is off the fucking wall. If you didn't watch, if you didn't watch Tiger King yet, the first two episodes are like. They're okay. You're gonna be like, okay, do I don't do I watch this? Do I finish it? Yes, That's where you, I'm abso- at. you absolutely finish it. That's where I'm at. Right Episode now. three will help you, you turn the corner. Have to, mm-hmm. have to. All right, it's fucking ludicrous. There was a drinking. There's drinking games already out about it, and like Hannah went through the list of drinking, like the things that whenever you take a drink. It's the whole fucking show. Yeah. You can't not take a drink the whole time. Shit faced. Oh my god! Within fucking ten minutes. Here, right there. But the man behind the music was Vince Johnson and vocalist Danny Clinton, who made up the Clinton Johnson band uh, that wrote and sang all of his songs. Oh my God. Bro, this fucking, fucking guy, guy. This guy's awesome. <laughs> his music videos were great. King, the king of content, though. Bro. Dude filmed everything. How about the guy? How about the guy? You didn't, you didn't get that far. No, I... All right, spoiler alert for everybody on some things in case I ruin it for you. But there's way too many fucking memes out there that, like, you already seen. You're already, yeah. Yeah, Carol Baskin. Yeah. That's the lady, like, that owns, she's doing the exact same thing he does. It is unreal, these fucking wackadoodles. They're fucking all of them. Every single one. The only guy that seemed normal was the, was the dude from Myrtle Beach. Oh, Doc Antle. Yeah, Doc Antle. His son's a big deal. You know that? No. His son Cody Antle. Yeah, he's he's the one that is like a Tarzan, a real Tarzan on Instagram. Mm. Similar person. Really? He's he's like one point two million followers. Yeah, he's one, a big deal. Yes, mm. like he's he's the man. Doc Antle. All of his pets are the ones in movies. Mm-hmm. He's the one that did all of Ace Ventura's. Yeah. He did all. He did. Uh, they That's went the dude with the ponytail. Yeah. Okay. Myrtle Beach. Yeah, yeah. That has like the the goatee thing and everything. Yeah. Like. Th- Man. It's fucked up because they're profiting heavily from these exotic animals, yet it's kind of like, I don't know what to do. I'm just watching it. It's pure entertainment. And I don't want to look too far into it. Mm-hmm. But then that crazy bitch, Carol Baskin, she's down there like going and, and, and fucking pushing for all these animal rights things to occur, the, getting PETA involved and saying people should own big cats, yet she owns big cats and has a fucking zoo and calls it a sanctuary. And makes people pay for them to walk through and look at all the animals and do the same goddamn thing. Hmm. I'm like, so wait, how is how is this not the same? The only thing I agree with her on is you shouldn't be traveling to like malls with tigers. Fuck no. Yeah, that's the only thing I agree on. But she is doing the exact same shit. But Bob's like, ah, it's for the sorry. kids. For the kids. <laughs> yeah, I guess not at a mall, but please do not take the fucking tigers to a mall. You shouldn't be traveling with them in a in a freaking tour bus. How van. do you feel about circuses then, there, tough guy? I don't like circuses. I don't like circuses either. Why not? Fucking hate them. Why? That's fucking animal abuse. I just have a. It's the same feeling I have from watching this fucking show. I, I hate the feeling from a circus. Oh, what's the feeling? Uh, just like it's all like. I don't know. They do weird stuff and it's all fake. They all travel together and they do weird stuff together and kind of like carnies. Yeah, I mean if you're. A, Good carny, I'm sorry if you're offended. I just don't like car. No, you don't like carnivals and you don't like circuses. It gives me a bad feeling inside. It's the only way I know how to put it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't so, like the fucking circus either. I was just curious to your yeah. point. Yeah. I don't like it because I agree with Shane. I do believe that it's animal abuse, and I'm not into it. I personally don't think anybody should own a fucking tiger. Okay. No. I don't think anybody should. When you go to the fucking zoo, don't they just look depressed? Yeah. They're like, why the fuck? I don't even want to look at this. I'm okay with never seeing a tiger because a ti- if you put me in a fucking cage, I ain't going to be too cool. No. No, it's not going to happen. I, I want to be free and I want to run naked through the woods mm-hmm. like a tiger. 
I mean, I don't probably, hate... I should probably start doing meth and like a bunch of XTC. <laughs> I will be a fucking tiger naked running through the woods. Be whatever you want. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> be a fucking gazelle. They're quick. <laughs> they are. Tigers eat gazelles. Yes, they do. <laughs> I'd rather be the tiger. Yep. But anyway, I do believe that it, there is some level of uh, it is some level of animal abuse. I can't speak too heavily upon it just because I'm not educated enough. But I don't think people should like have a predatory animal in captivity. No, I don't think so. I'm a little I'm a little hesitant with that whole thing. I don't think a, a fucking tiger or a lion or a liger. You see that they fucking Lions and tigers fucking to make a lager. Yeah. It's a real thing. It's crazy. Nuts. Yeah, you could buy one for like five grand. I got five grand. I have five thousand dollars that I could go buy a lager with or whatever things they're selling. Why do I need that? I mean, fuck yeah, I'd love to walk a tiger. But the bitch can eat my children. Could eat you. It could eat anything. Like Carol Baskin's husband. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, bro, that bitch is nuts. Oh, yeah. I, I love the fact that the whole time he's a, he's just like, that bitch Carol Baskin. That bitch Carol Baskin. <laughs> he says it like it all Rick time. Rick records so many videos of just him calling her out. Bro, the dude was whacked. Whacked. My favorite meme I just showed you this morning was, uh, uh, remember from... Office space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember he's talking to the dude that they can hear through the wall, the guy with the Fu Manchu. Yeah. And he asks him, he's like, What's it? Wow, what's the dude's name, real quick? <laughs> oh, fuck. I don't hey, know. Peter, man. Hey, Peter, man. <laughs> Turn Check on it. channel nine. <laughs> Breast exams. <laughs> Lawrence. Oh, hey, Lawrence, Lawrence <laughs> can you pretend we can't hear each other through the walls? <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. But whenever he's Doing like, the drywall up at the new McDonald's. <laughs> like lawrence what would you do if you had a million dollars lawrence what's, what's his name i don't know oh i gotta look it up i'll find it oh it was pretty good whenever i thought it was lawrence i think it I, i'm second guessing myself that fucking movie's hilarious did you take my stapler yeah lawrence all right yep so then whenever he says lawrence what would you do if you had a million dollars he's like i'll tell you what i do two chicks at the same time <laughs> The meme was those two talking back and forth. And he's like, Lawrence, what would you do if you had 200 tigers? And he's like, two dudes at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking great meme. Great meme. The memes are out of hand right now. Yeah. The memes are r- absolutely ridiculous. I th- it's why I know like, p- not People everyone's are- lost their shit yet. Everybody's They're- still doing well. Yeah. Still doing well. Yep. The memes are good. Memes are fire. Yeah, the meme makers are still in business. Yep. I don't. They don't do it for the. They don't do it for the publicity. No. They do it for the love of the memes. So I kind of got schooled on. Remember, I said I could outrun a snake. Like I'm not scared of snakes. Yeah. Kind of got some heat from a couple people from the south. All right, let's hear it. I'm, I so, was I was arguing with you because I I did the research. Wrong. Fucking said one mile an hour. Or something. Yeah, I'm outrunning that. Yeah. So you got to be careful. They're, they'll stalk your ass. And, like, it's the attack. It's, like, the attack you got to worry about. Like I said. I thought, like, so, like, if you think of, like, a snake, like, a fast, like, rattlesnake, like, it'll, like, chase you. It's, like, like that, fast. I knew an anaconda couldn't do that. Yeah. But I didn't anticipate the attack. I don't understand. Well, the attack is, like, I thought it was going to chase me down and attack me. It's not going to do that. It's going to stalk me when, yeah, it's I, when I don't know it and then fucking, You don't yeah. see it. And then it goes. I argued with a couple guys. I mean, they're fucking huge snakes. I'm going to see it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you are fucking with everybody, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I love how you do things so subtly that a lot of people don't know or aren't able to catch on. No, there's one the guy. the whole time, you're just fucking, fucking with people. You do it yeah. with me. You do it with everybody in the office. Yeah, I, I like lead them on a little bit more. They have no idea. And you're just completely fucking with everybody just to get a rise out of them and make no. them look like an asshole. That's it, dude. <laughs> you're really good at it. Thank you. I'm and, actually and, pretty scared of snakes. <laughs> I think, I know. Well, <laughs> Nobody can tell the demeanor because you do it with every like we've been. How long we've been in this office? Like eight months, mm-hmm. and you you're still doing the same shit. It still works. Yeah, 
Yeah, I still I get the show a lot. Oh yeah. He doesn't and, and he's a and he's a big ass buster and fucking you know, sarcastic, but he oh. doesn't get my level sometimes. I think he's he's probably the best at being the most inappropriate. Yes. Yeah. For Way sure. Over the top. That's a boomer move. Yeah, it is. Say really inappropriate things that are really gonna get under your skin. And you're like, hmm, I know you're fucking with me right now. That was a good one. Pretty good one. It's like the, it's like the mechanic. It's like the fucking guys that do everything for the comp, like the mechanics at a company. Yeah, always the biggest fucking ball busters. Yep. Because you have to call them to fix things. So like the most needed people. Yep. And they come and call you a moron for breaking shit. They've done all your jobs. They've done all that. They fucked all that up. Oh yeah. Once before. Yep. They're yeah. way better at it than you. Can't I even remember, believe that you're employed. I remember my first. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. You know. Boomer move. Boomer. Uh, that was, I tell you what, being a mechanic is one thing that I cannot do. I am not mechanically inclined from a, like a vehicle perspective. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. I don't. I mean, I can change a tire, change oil, change brakes, change rotors. I can't rebuild an engine. No, I, I, I don't think even if I was taught, mm -hmm. it would take, I think that it would take me like a full year to grasp the concept that somebody that is mechanically inclined that grasps it in like a month, yeah, I think it would take me a, a year to get to that same level. I just don't get it. I think I'd be pretty good with it. I would imagine you would be good, yes. Because like I, I always did my own shit. I mean, even like when I first started buying, like I got my first car, put an exhaust and intake on. I mean, I did it myself. Yeah, you know, I, I just I figured it out. Granted, all that shit was just bolt on stuff. Sure, but you understood the concept of the yeah. vehicle. Yep. Yeah. I think, like I said, I'd be able to grasp, but it just, you know, it, you know, it's like this. It's like, uh, we'll take the backflip, for example. Mm -hmm. Everybody, there was people in there busting my balls about it and like all this shit. And I'm like, well, yeah, I, I'm not a gymnast, I'm a bodybuilder. Yeah. My whole goal was to be five foot six, 250 pounds. Mm -hmm. I was able to achieve that. You know, like, that's great. My mind works in that. I doubled down on my strengths. Whenever I know I'm good at something, I fucking double down on it. Whenever I find something that I'm not good at, I do not completely throw it out the window. I have someone else get inputted, and I learn from them, and then I play devil's advocate, like you. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not the computer guy. However, I know enough about computers to ask questions. Yeah. And, and, and then I ask you a million questions about it. So then I understand, just as you ask me a million questions about my job. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's like we're, we're feeding. Yep. Now, I, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to other things in life, like you have to double down on your strengths and not be afraid to try new things, like the backflip thing. I did that because it was fun and it was funny and it was entertaining and I was trying something new. You have to be vulnerable in life to be open to doing those things. Yeah. And then not be afraid of criticism or ridicule or anything like that. And I think in life, it's important for people to be open to doing those things. And you can't be afraid to try something new. But when you find out what you're good at, double down on that bitch. And those things that you're not good at, oh, don't be afraid to dabble. Don't worry about the ridicule. Don't worry about all the bullshit. Just go with it. Mm-hmm. Got to live a little bit. Got to. I'm not, uh, and, and that's the value in life that most people, that everybody has to find what they're good at in life. The only way to find out is try. Like, I don't care if people bust my balls. Like, within bodybuilding, bodybuilding works in my head. You don't see me go around busting people's balls about them sucking at bodybuilding or them not being good at lifting weights or them not, or being afraid to try new things. I don't care if you're 350 fucking pounds. Very simple. Start exercising. I say some ignorant, joking things, like put the fork down, you fat fuck, okay? You need to say those things to yourself. Mm -hmm. I have say those things to myself, like yesterday when I did a backflip. Don't be a pussy. The kids are having fun. Let's, get, let's lighten it up. Let's do dad's first backflip. It was a straight dad flip, by the way. Dad flip. Big dad flip. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I think that in life, the, there is many places to inject negativity, and that should never happen. Yet, uh, people do it a lot. People bust my balls. The one dude, it, he did, the one guy was like, uh, uh, he was like, man, my man, thick. <laughs> <laughs> and like uh, Brendan Schaub. Yeah. I follow him on Instagram. And he said, because Brendan is 
with the thick thing. Like uh, he he always emphasizes it. It's funny as fuck. Yeah. He's like my boy thick, <laughs> and uh, he said that he mentioned Brendan and Shaw, but I'm like, bro, it's funny as fuck. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm thick right now. I'm five foot six, two hundred thirty five, two hundred thirty plus pounds. Yep. Been my whole life. In order for me to be like two twenty, I have to stop eating. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm not going to. I'm enjoying it. I like being strong and big and. I can fucking run. Mm-hmm. I'm having fun. You're good then. I'm the fu- I'm fine. Yeah. Everything's cool. But uh, there's a difference between things being funny and then people trying to inject negativity. And I think that whenever you're trying new things, I think a lot of people hesitate on doing that just because they're afraid of the ridicule or the, the, the negativity. Yeah. Have fun with it. Most everybody, everybody, you know, they think it's funny as fuck. That, that's how I am with, uh, like, with like shooting guns. You know, because I'm not great at shooting guns. So, like, when I get around people that are really great at shooting guns, like, it's, like, you're scared to, oh yeah, you know, it, be it, ridiculed or, like, question your form or whatever it is. That's you why, know, but, and that's why getting around good people is important. Yeah. Like, if people, whenever people come and lift weights with me, I don't want to give you anything but advice and mm-hmm. good advice and encourage you. Yep. Because I want, because I know that if you leave here feeling better with a better workout than you've ever gotten, you're going home happier to the people that love you. Mm -hmm. You leave me in a better mood, your family's going to feel it because you are a great person. You are important to your family. I feel those are the people that I want to get around. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be around people that are just going to shit bag and and do ignorant things. After my backflip, Like, hey, you should do this or that. Or after shooting guns, that's why I go shooting with Chris. Mm -hmm. When I go shooting with Chris, Chris is a fucking professional. So when I shoot with him, he tells me the simple mechanics of how to do things. And then I feel better. And then I get a little bit better each time I'm with him. And then I continue to practice and get a little bit better each time. Just as if you were lifting weights with me. Lifting weights with a professional. Or in your case, whenever it comes to, to, to designing everything that you've done at this but all the companies, mm-hmm. you don't sit there and talk down to people about how to do things. You didn't do it with Shane. You don't do it with Jay. You never did it with Allie. You don't do it with anybody at this company. You encourage them to become better at their craft so that they're better people. That's the good shit. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing that most that more people need. So after you're done shooting guns, you go inside, you're like, hey, babe, she see me out there? It's fucking killing shit. <laughs> And meanwhile, Chris is like, it was a rough day with Bob. He did good. He's getting better. And you're fucking at home like, yeah. Just as if somebody that is at a beginner level comes to lift weights with me. Mm. Like Chris knows a ton of intricate, very advanced skills. He's not teaching that shit to me out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Same thing if someone comes in at a very beginner level with me, I'm not going to teach him how to do advanced fucking training. And how to and how to make it it more intense than they can even handle? No. Yeah. And nor break down their fucking egos. Yeah, you're just you're just leaving there discouraged and probably not want to fucking do it again. I don't want none of that. Nope. And that's why whenever you get around fucking shit bags, I kind of smile and go, "Okay, fuckhead. All right, I'll play house guest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. Oh, great, great. Get the fuck away from me and never call you again." <laughs> And and because and I don't want to, you don't. Nobody needs that in their life. People mm-hmm. need the good stuff. So and you know, whenever like video gaming, fuck, started video gaming. I'm terrified to go video game with some of these dudes that are stupid great. Video gaming. Video, video gaming. gaming. It's like videotaping, right? Yeah, same thing. <laughs> you just boomerized gaming. <laughs> Fucking right, I did. Would you expect anything less? <laughs> I just got into video gaming. Or videotape it. Videotape it. We'll put it on the internet. Do live video tape of video gaming. Yeah. All we're going to do is put streaming. It, we're going to yeah. put it on the line right away. It's not streaming. We're just going to do it immediately. We're going to do like a video, but not recorded. It's going to be available right away. Yeah. For everyone to see. It's not streaming, though. It's something completely different. Right? We're just spitballing here. We're going to put it on the line like right away, immediately. Like, the videotape will be going. And people can, like, chat about it. Then they can talk to me while I'm doing it. Yep. We can do that, right, Shane? Yeah. I'm so fucking lost. We should do a version of, Shane's like, like... Shane's like, is he fucking serious? Like, if there, was, if there was a way for every follower and listener to see us play video games on the line... Yeah. 
like they can watch us while I do it, talk to me, and we can just uh, converse all that while I'm doing it, right? Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. It's not streaming though. Fuck. It's not streaming, right? Mm-mm. No. No. It's a little different. <laughs> do it our way. Yeah. As soon as AOL comes back. <laughs> he has no idea. So fucking lost. Shane, that's that, that whole skit's from a movie, dude. I have no idea. It's from the internship. Yeah, oh never, my god, I've seen that. Whenever yeah. Vince Vaughn's talking to the kid about dude, Instagram, he's like, Exchange Gram. He's like, we, we need to develop an app where you can like instantly like pictures. Just and post a picture up, like it. <laughs> and he's like, You mean Instagram? And he says, No, 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 no. This is completely different. He's like, it's gonna be, oh look, I'm out with my friends at the club. Click, take a picture, make the noise. I'm not good at fucking remembering that. (laughs) He's like, and then it'll be put out on the line. Online. You mean online? Yeah, on the line. We'll put it up in the cloud. Immediately. It'll be up there. Yeah, it's Instagram. It sold for like $3 billion. (laughs) That's a good movie. It's funny. I fuck it. That's where Pappy. That's where I first found out about Pappy. Really? Yeah, they talk about it through the whole movie. Fuck yeah, Pappy. Really? Yeah, at the beginning, whenever they go on that, get they go out with the, uh, they go to the dinner with the, uh, the black businessman that owns all the malls, oh, and they're man. trying to sell them watches, and they're talking about time, and they order like a round of Pappy. Man, I missed that. Oh yeah. I must have not known what it was then. Oh, yeah, because yeah. because then the guy criticized him. He's like, that is some high-end shit. He's like, I'm going to get this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the pappy. Mm. Big fan of bourbon. Yes. But anyway, video gaming. Uh, <laughs> I'm not good at it, and I'm terrified to play with other people until I get a little bit better. Yeah. I'm on, like, level 39 mm-hmm. in Warzone, yeah. Call of Duty. I played uh, probably a total of like five hours now, so I'm getting better, mm-hmm. catching on. I haven't played video games in years, mm-hmm. so I'm getting there. Yeah, you, 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 we played a little bit last night together. Mm-hmm. I'm enjoying it. A little bit of a shit show last night, but a couple of okay finishes. Figured out. You guys won last week. Yeah, yeah, we had a big win last week. Yeah, we won last week. Mm-hmm. Yep. The highest I've got on my own was uh, the highest I got on my own was seventeenth place yesterday. Nice. Yeah. What did we get? Did think, we get fourteenth? I think we had a fourteenth or eighteenth. I don't remember. Yeah. We had a top twenty. I'm catching on now. Either way, I'm enjoying it. I can see why people fucking get sucked in. Mm-hmm. It is very, very easy to play that game for hours. Yes. Yeah. Very easy to. It's like a. I, I take it as like it's like a game within a game within a game type thing. Like say say one of us dies. We go into the fucking uh the gulag. We go in, we die again. Yeah. I mean Shane's great at redeeming an entire team death. Yes. <laughs> so like that's like like the game within the game. So if I get back in, you both are out and like my new goal is forty five hundred bucks to bring one of you back in. It, 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 oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, there's you know, like different, there's you have different. these like little internal wins, you know, to hopefully win the so whole fucking you, match. Have you played the Blood Money yet? Plunder? Yeah, yeah, I've played a couple. I fucking love it. I'm not really into it. I love that part of the game. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. Yeah, because I just like looting and killing people for their fucking money. Yeah, like whenever it pops up, like there was one point where I had like six hundred fucking thousand dollars. Okay, damn, I was in third place. With two other dudes, mm. I had a hundred and sixty grand on me, and I could not get to the place to take the money up. Yeah, and I didn't know how to do the balloon drop thing. Yeah, because I was just so into it. It was, I think, it was like my fourth game, and I'm fucking there, and all of a sudden, dude, I got fucking popped. I'm like, damn it, because it was getting more intense, mm-hmm. and then I got popped again, <laughs> and I was losing all of my fucking money. I was so unhappy. I was doing <laughs> so good, and it all went down the shitter. <laughs> I got really pissed and then played more games because yeah. I thought I was going to do better. Then I didn't do better. Ah. No, no. Some yeah. I swear something occurs some nights where it's just like nothing works. Yeah, exactly. Like, and then other nights where we'll go back to back to back like top tens. Yeah. Do you think that that's? Uh, do you think that's like the casino? 
Yeah, it's like gambling, I think. They yeah. put you in there, to yep. keep you in there, fuck you up, keep you coming back. Sometimes it's skill-based matchmaking. That, like some games do that. Fortnite does that. Well, that's how they do it. That's how they do the casino mm-hmm. thing. They, they, they'll they throw in fucking top-ranked players for an entire fucking night, or you're just paired with shit fucking low, lower levels that they're just getting into it. Yeah. But throws your whole night off. I can always tell when I'm playing against somebody that just got into it, like myself. Yeah. I can tell. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like, if there's, like, a night we win, and you're like, okay, here's our first win of the night, we're never going to win again. Because they're going to put us with people that have been winning. Yeah. And right. we just lose. That's whatever happens That's what when happens. you go to the winner's bracket, Shane. So it happens. I wonder what the biggest streak has been. I don't I don't know. On Call of Duty. On on Fortnite, it's, it's a lot. Like what? Like 50-plus games. Oh, shit. 50-plus yeah. games coming in first place. Yes. In Who a did row. that? Ninja. Uh, Ninja, I think. <sighs> Ninja's like the Tom Brady. He's calling himself the Tom Brady of gaming. I think he's got a few more years to go before you call yourself fucking Tom Brady of anything. Oh, never mind. This this one dude. Maybe that was on duos he did it, but somebody won 68 games in a row. That's nuts. For Fortnite. For Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Put, put most Warzone wins in a row. I don't know if that's available. It's too new. Fortnite stats are different than Warzone stats. Yeah. I do enjoy it, though. Got to hand it to that ninja fella, though. That motherfucker, I mean, he is the best gamer, most profitable gamer. He is in an industry that is fucking murdering it right now, and he runs his shit like a business. Mm -hmm. Because he, if he, okay, so he is the best gamer in the world, and he has been for years running now. I wouldn't say he's the best gamer in the world. But go ahead. He's the best streamer in the world, for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, those best, are two different things. Two different things. Yep. I'm getting, I'm getting boomerized right now. Uh, two different things. Yep. How so? Because um, you can a streamer's entertainment. Yeah. You got to be good, uh-huh. and you got to manage your stuff like a business, like you said. Uh, if you're the best gamer in the world, you win like a lot. You just win. It's not like just you're win. running a business or a, he still that guy probably still does well financially. Yeah, he. I mean, he could, or just not. Who's pay the best attention. gamer then? Uh, it depends what game it is. Oh, so you're saying that this that Ninja is the best streamer? He's very skilled. I'm not taking away from him. He's oh, really no. good. Well, oh fuck yeah! I mean, yeah. he's yeah. But he's really good at streaming. Like he streams for ten hours a day. His wife is his manager. Oh, okay, yeah. They do everything around. I mean, I'm pretty sure game. that guy is a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Yes. Big, mm-hmm. big, big. He makes like 500000 a month. Oh, bitch. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding no. me? No. Ninja's lucrative. Like, it's a, it's a lucrative business. 500 a month. Mm-hmm. He, he's mainstream. And he's not faking anything. He is who he is. He used to swear a lot. Like, on stream, he used to, like, oh, negativity. Really? Like, when he'd die, he'd yell at people, like that stuff. He had to tone it back. He had to censor his shit. Because of the kids. Because of the kids. He started doing, like, Ninja After Dark, which, like, after 9 p.m. or something, he would... Oh, good for him. Good, yeah. Mo- good move. But good he pulled move. that. Great he, move. Good move. But that also put him in a bracket where he couldn't play with other streamers because the, their audience would, you'd swear. Like, he couldn't play with you, for example. Like, oh, he yeah. would be like, okay, I, hey, man, I, I got to censor him. But I wouldn't swear. You have to not swear, yeah. So he used to play with a lot of people that did. I can say that, but I probably will. Yeah. And now he pulled it back to where he's uncensored again. He doesn't do the uh, Ninja After Dark. So he's completely. No swearing. He he swears. Oh, he's back to he, that. He's back to swearing all the time. Okay. He's not as toxic as he was. Like he's not telling people like go fuck themselves or he's anything. He's not telling anybody suck a dick. Or yeah. Anything. Well, I mean, he might, but <sighs> hmm. he'll drop an f bomb here and there. Okay. Yeah. Man, no, I knew that he. I didn't know he made that much. Oh yeah, sponsorships sponsored by like Uber Six Eats and a shit. Year, dude. Mm-hmm. Chipotle. Chipotle. Oh yeah, these gamers are sponsored by Chipotle. Ninja and Matt Frazier, sponsored by fucking Chipotle. I mean, I get the Matt Frazier thing. Yeah. I can't eat. I couldn't be sponsored by him. Chipotle. Yeah. It fuck my stomach up. Yeah, me too. I love Chipotle so much. It's so delicious. I can't tell you how much I enjoy the taste of their food, but what it does to my belly is just not good. I haven't had Chipotle in two months. I haven't, I haven't had it in quite some time. I love it. It tastes so good. But I haven't, after the last stint with Chipotle, 
I haven't brought myself to be like, oh, I'm going to go through that horrible fucking gas pain and then shit my brains out the next morning. Or and, and it's like instant. six hours later. Like a few For hours. For you, you get all fucked up. Yeah, like an hour after, two hours after. Oh, my stomach hurts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then like the 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 elimination process. I, I, I haven't had Chick-fil-A in a while either. I like Chick-fil-A. Oh, damn. He makes a half a million a month just off YouTube. <gasps> oh, boy. Oh, so I, I was completely wrong. Yeah, you were. He makes, he makes way more. He it says he makes eighteen mil a year. He makes a million and a, ha- a million a month. Makes one and a half. YouTube and Twitch, and then another three and a half to four million a year in endorsements. Well, good for him. Playing fucking video game. Fucking right. Video games big. Video game. I can I can see I can see it. Bro, we are doing it. I'm enjoying it. Mm-hmm. I'm in. It's fun. I don't have the time in my regular life. And and streaming is so fucking big. Like you know how like we watch our watch podcasts and yeah. listen to something cool. We're doing cardio, and that's what my brother's doing. That's what these kids are doing. They just watch. They just watch gameplay. They just watch streaming. They just. It seems so awkward, in my opinion, just because I don't. The, I haven't the, gotten into someone yet. Mine doesn't work that way. Or I, or I haven't watched the right guy that I'm like into yet. I'm sure there's someone on Twitch that I'm gonna be like, fuck, this guy's hilarious. I'm gonna watch him. Yeah, there's a few. There's a few really funny ones. Are there ones, guys yeah. that stream that aren't good? Yes, of like, course. aren't good at video games but are entertaining. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's mm-hmm. a thing, too? That is a thing, yep. Wow. Like, I don't win a lot when I stream. I just like having fun. I talk to talk to some people to jump in. It's just, I mean, yeah, it could be looked at as awkward. Like, I'm just sitting there talking to people that just yeah, but, type to but me. But anything can be awkward to certain people. People yeah. can think video games are stupid and this whole thing is dumb. I mean... I bust balls, but at the end of the day, I think that, I mean, the video game industry is a $200 billion industry. Mm -hmm. It makes fitness look like shit. Mm -hmm. Yet they're both lucrative. Everybody makes money. It's an industry that can, that does wonders for the economy, does wonders for people. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I was telling, like I was saying, bro, these people are moving so fast. What is happening in their brains? The activity is happening so fast and there is a lot of money to be made in fucking video games apparently i didn't know that much Mm -hmm. but uh these people do have a skill that can be translated into the economy into a workplace that would be great for them to be able to utilize it Mm -hmm. so man it's crazy there's so much shit to retain in just one game yes like one style of gameplay yes combinations of buttons and perks and weapons and that's what i mean you could probably take somebody you could probably take somebody and put him take somebody that's into video gaming and (laughs) i'm gonna say it every time now it's funny and put him into a piece of equipment and they'd be able to run that fucking backhoe the fucking skid steer they'd be able to run any piece of equipment and learn it relatively quickly Mm -hmm. for sure bet you could yeah i mean i think so you probably have have these fucking (laughs) Have a fucking six foot, hundred and sixty pound fucking gamer out there in a fucking five million dollar backhoe, fucking digging holes. You're not gonna come back from this if you fuck up, though. You oh, know, dude, that, you're not coming back into the game. Making fucking yeah, you yeah. Can't you're, respond. You can't. I respond. think that that'll be the big yeah. That'll be the biggest hurdle for them. Like with with like a real life type scenario like that. Uh, no I respond. I bet you there's a lot of uh, military intelligence that could benefit from gaming as well. Mm-hmm. Ton, yeah. Yeah, I mean, fuck, it makes sense. I don't know. I mean, any game. A- anything you invest that much time in and you become an expert at, I mean, there, there's there's value behind it to someone. For sure. I mean, I, I had a buddy uh, I went to high school with. He was very, very, very good at Madden. Like, exceptionally good at Madden. Like, how good? Like, I think there was times, like, whenever a new, a new, like, the new Madden would come out, he'd be ranking in the top 1,000, maybe even higher on li- no online. Shit. Online, where it's just fucking stupid difficult to do well in Madden online. But he had a knowledge of football and a knowledge of a defense. He could rip you apart. Like, he'll know, he'll know what kind of defense you're running Ugh. every play. How do you do that? I don't know. 
How, how does Shane know a combination of perks and guns to help him through a match? Like you just like you, you're at it so much that you know. Yeah, it's all relatable back to anything that you're good at. I think it's crazy that some like you can be very very good at gaming, still work, still have like a personal life. Like I'm not good at gaming because I don't do it all the time. Yeah, that, well, that's what I mean. Like I my regular day would never allow me to play video games. But no. now, since everything has, has slowed up, it's like, oh, look, opportunity to play a video game. I'm going to play. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yep. Like, yeah, oh, I'm going to have a third fucking kid. Let me have multiple businesses, gymnastics, three kids, and, another, and a personal life. I'm going to have a hard time finding time for myself. Say hi to my dick every morning. That's all I get. I won't get the 15 minutes of fame with him. I won't get well, nothing. Well, oh, see you well, later. Oh, well, see you later, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But that was my weekend. It was full of Tiger King, some video games, backflip, running miles. It was an impressive weekend for me. I ate a bunch of food. I did that, too. I ate a ton of food Friday night. What'd you eat? Keto. Keto man. No, I ate a. We did two pizzas again. Oh, nice! Since it worked so well last weekend, I figured I'd do it again. Uh huh. So, eat two pizzas. Um, f- polished off the Ben and Jerry's from the weekend before. Uh huh. And then I didn't know about this. Uh, Kim went, you know, got Oakmont cupcakes for Jay for his birthday. Yeah. She also got me a chocolate like eclair. Oh there. man, begging. Yeah. And so I housed that Friday night as well. You were all in. Yeah. How'd you feel Saturday? A little shitty. Oh, really? A little bit. Like, I was just, like, lethargic, headache. My belly was okay. I emptied out. And then uh, Sunday morning, I was still in keto. Oh, really? This morning, still in keto. You're in it. Yeah, dude. It just, it fuck it. And then yesterday, I had a crazy workout. Like, crazy good chest workout nice. yesterday. Yeah. It's great. Yep. So I'm I'm all for the weekly, weekly, weekly cheat meal. I need it. Yeah, yeah. It's good mentally, good for the body. Yep. I mean, you you look better than you've looked in fucking pretty much. I feel so much better. It's so awesome. much better. I was just being such a fat fuck, like bitching in the beginning about not being yeah. able to have my foods. And yeah. Now you're good. Yeah. Now we're good. I ate way too many snacks this weekend. Yeah. Cookies cookies i don't eat cookies either what kind of cookies are you eating uh my mom brought over cookies for the girls because she missed the girls she hasn't seen them in forever so they were fire yeah uh i ate like five of those and then i ate like half a row of oreos uh i ran well it's okay it it canceled everything out I'm sure my fucking, my four miles canceled out the 8,000 calories worth of cookies I ate. Yeah, I'm sure you burned 8,000 during that four I miles. I fucking felt like it. <laughs> I sweat through my shirt in like fucking 25 minutes. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, it was cookies were out of hand. Made really good burgers. Nice. Really good burgers the one night. And then I ate more cookies that night. <laughs> what, did we, what did we cook? I, I like didn't grill all weekend because I grill every day. Really? Yeah, and we we kind of stayed away from it. We did meatballs. We did meatballs. Uh, yep. What we, kind of meatballs do you make? Just regular beef, like beef meatballs. Did you put anything in them? Um, just like fresh garlic and Italian season seasonings. Onions. Uh, yeah, I think there were some onions in there. But we did uh we did that yesterday. I made a like a Parmesan chicken on Saturday. Parmesan chicken. Yeah, Parmesan chicken. That sounds amazing. It was actually fucking we, really good. We made uh, honey mustard chicken last night. Oh. You know that Nazers has honey mustard. If you ask the deli counter, they mean? they sell like honey mustard. Like oh, their really? like their own. Yes, Ooh. it's fire. Really, really good. To check that out. Yeah, you got to ask the deli. They don't have it just sitting out. You have to go and ask, like, hey, do you guys have any honey on uh, honey mustard? Yeah. And they they pull like a I don't know what it is like a gallon bucket out yeah. of the uh, fridge. Yeah. Man, I am a whore for honey mustard. I love it. You're a honey mustard guy for sure. Oh, fuck yeah, I love mustard. Yeah. Not like uh, 
Uh, I just, I like it. Okay. Uh, this will be good. Let's go through this. This is a great question. Let's get stoned and ask food questions. Okay. That's always a good time. Let me get some more coffee. Hold on. Okay. Uh, so, with me and food have this fucking love affair. I'm just a fat guy. I fucking love food. It has always been a part of my life. I love it. I love food at all times of the year. There's not a time of year that I hate food. It's just what's always brought the family together. It's just what I've always liked. Now, there is a time that I cannot fucking diet. Yet, it's the greatest time to eat healthy foods. The summertime. There is no way I can get on a diet in the summer, yet the summertime is whenever I look my best. But I do not watch what I eat in the summer. I just eat what I love. Grilled chicken, barbecue chicken, watermelon, fruit, cantaloupe, honeydew. Fresh veggies and corn. Oh, corn on the cob. I cannot diet in the summertime, yet I look the best in the summertime. The summertime, I will, uh, like, if you told me in the summer I had to be on a diet, like, oh, you're strict dieting, this is what you can eat, I'd fucking probably go crazy. Mm -hmm. Fucking summertime, favorite all-time food. So what is it? You just staying in better shape, just being outside, moving more? Yes. That, that's... Oh, I, wait, I'm, uh, I eat less, yet I eat whatever I want. I just eat fruit all the time. Mm -hmm. I love fruit. Watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew. Pineapple, like those are those are all at the top of my list. A fucking, I'd probably say watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew are like top three. All melons. I love melons. I do too. I like big ones. I like small ones. I like medium sized ones. I like juicy ones. Yep. I don't like dry ones though. No. No. Um, but if you were to say, what is your all time favorite food season of the year? Both of you. All-time favorite food season of the year. I like the fall. Oh, uh, so what would you what 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 gets categorized into the fall food foods for you? Um, I mean, I just like Thanksgiving. So like Oh, I'd, so oh yeah, holiday it could yeah. either be holiday, season, anything. You're a you're a Thanksgiving food. That's your number yep. 1. Yep. I don't think Bob agrees with you and I can't wait to watch him argue and fuck you up on this one. Or you might fuck him up. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite foods of that season, of that holiday? Like stuffing. I love stuffing. Oh, you're a stuffing guy. Yeah. Gravy on your stuffing? Yep. Sausage in the stuffing or no sausage um, in the stuffing? No, no sausage. Okay, that no. might be like a German thing that yeah. happens. Um, so stuffing, big food for you. Yep. So you like stuffing, like stuffed chicken? Yep. Uh, so you, you, okay. Yeah, I'm the whole. Do you like, gra did you say gravy yep. on the stuffing? Okay. Gravy. Uh -huh. Yeah, mashed potatoes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you think of turkey? I like it sometimes, but it, I mean, do you turkey just, just makes you tired. Do you only eat turkey on Thanksgiving? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Bob, you're up. Mm. Summertime foods for sure. Summertime's for you. Mm -hmm. What is your all-time favorite food or meal in the summer? Like run me through, oh, if you were like, if Kim was like, Oh, like your perfect day is going to happen. You get to ride your tractor all day. I get to make you your favorite meal, and I'm going to fucking suck your dick on the front porch type of day. Okay. Like that's your day. Like yeah. what's the meal in the summertime? Like one of two meals. All right, one of two. Let's go. So one, it's just like uh, just like steak, salad, corn, like really light. Corn on the cob. Yeah, corn on the cob for sure. Uh-huh. The ultimate one would just be like our, our homemade tacos and margaritas. Oh, okay. Like that's my thing. Like, because like that's what she did during the summer. Like, yeah. I'd be almost finished up cutting the grass and like just like blowing, straighten everything up. And she'd bring out like the first margarita and like have a sip of that, maybe have a smoke, hang out, yeah. and then go in and have another margarita and tacos are almost done. Yeah. Yes. Because I can eat like, 20 of those things and they still feel light nothing happens yeah I'm still fucking uh-huh still functional yep not a little drunk from the margaritas yes a little stoned up yep fucking right yeah so it's like the entire situation that puts me in that summertime yeah i love it yeah i don't 
I'm not into fall foods, really. Like heavy, thick fall foods. No. No. Like I'm not a big Thanksgiving food guy. I'm just not. Uh-oh. I, I, never, I respect that. I never was. Like even my mom knew like, ah. Bob just doesn't like it. No, I, 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 like, I can appreciate a good stuffing, but, <laughs> you know. I'm I, sure Kim can too. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as you said it, you were like, fuck. Kim loves stuffing. <laughs> She does, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I like I like the lighter foods. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. All right, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can. I, I mean, I like that. I'm yeah. a fall guy, though. Like, I'm. I was born in October. Like, I just like the fall. Like, I like the trees changing, the the weather. So how that it feels. has a big thing with you in the food. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> I just like the fall favorite time of year. I just forgot about something though. Wow. Well, let's hear it. Like I do. I do get excited for like the whole like pumpkin spice mm. era of yeah. the fall mm-hmm. i do like that if no 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 i'm not we're not saying that you don't we're saying all-time favorite hands down like yeah all-time favorite spring and summer like grilling outsider taco oh yeah type i'm i'm fucking i am a western pennsylvania summer guy mm-hmm. i love all the seasons all-time favorite summertime foods mm-hmm. all-time favorite like whole setup of a meal I love barbecue chicken. Yeah. I fucking love it. I like barbecue legs. I like barbecue thighs. I like barbecue boobies. You name it, I like it. I love barbecue chicken. Mm-hmm. Corn on the cob. Fucking, you can't, a good corn on the cob for me can't be beat. I like it plain. I like it with butter. I like it with butter and salt. I love corn on the cob. Honestly, until I met you, like, I wasn't really into summer foods either. Just because you you taught me to eat lighter in the summer. Oh fuck yeah! Because because I grew up in I grew up in Berks County, Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. You have a fucking potato with whatever you're eating. If you're having potatoes, you're having uh, a potato with it. Really, bro? Fuck yeah! So like, I, I was never into like when we'd make steak in the summertime because it'd be like steak and a potato, and you're just like, ah, uh, no, 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 you, steak and a salad. Yeah, we'd make you'd make at your house when yeah. we come up, come over, steak and a salad, steak yep. and corn. Yep. Then, and then that leaves room for like a light dessert. Yes. I Popsicles also, or a little ice cream. Huge pasta salad fan. Yeah. Fucking love pasta salad. Mm-hmm. My mom also makes fire taco salad. Mm. I don't do potato salad though. And macaroni salad, fuck those things. I don't do that shit. Mm-mm. I do the pasta salad. I like that. Because yep. it just feels lighter because it has the Italian dressing and shit on it. Yep. A little bit of zest. Yeah. A little spicy. Mm-hmm. Love that shit. Oh, I do like Fourth of July meal, though, too. Fucking that's right. That's like one of the best I guess summer that's, meals. I guess that's the yeah. essence I was getting that there. Yeah. As soon as you said, like, grilling and stuff, like, Fourth so of July is awesome. I, can, I like foods you can pick at, like, throughout the day, having a couple beers and, like, mm-hmm. never get. <sighs> no. Yeah. I won't. I very seldom get there in the summertime because I, 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 I just like, I don't know, I like that for lack of better terms, functional feeling. Mm -hmm. I like waking up, I will eat fruit in the morning and go cut the grass or work outside until, you know, noon or something and then have something light again. Mm -hmm. Like a piece of chicken and some more fruit. Like there's, I probably spend, I spend a good few hundred dollars a month on fruit in the summer. The kids, that's all, Adeline, Adeline, Emmy and, and Hannah, bro, they run through fruit. Hannah's thing right now during her pregnancy, she freezes grapes. Anybody ever seen anybody freeze grapes? No. Yeah, no. she washes them and then cleans them up, puts them in a Ziploc, and then throws them in the freezer. Mm. And then, like, she'll just fucking frozen grapes. Loves them. Like, are they rock hard? Uh, or do they stay, like... I think they're, like, edible, mm. but not, like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man. Eats a fuck out of them. I mean, I'd they, definitely try one. I can't. My teeth are too sensitive. Mm. I have very sensitive teeth. They're all fucked up. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So freezing them brings out the grapes' natural sweetness and crunch. Oh, no shit. Did no she shit. do this on her own, or did she see someone do it? She's been doing it for years, apparently. Oh, She that's was crazy. astonished that I've never eaten them. I've never heard of that. Me neither. Yeah, yeah I said she's a weird one. Uh, but anyway. Now, uh, but that's my summertime shit. Mm. Love that stuff. I think it's great. I also, my favorite dessert of all time, angel food cake with uh, berries with berries and strawberries. With strawberries, like, you, you ever make the strawberries with the sugar on them? Mm-hmm. You can use Splenda, make strawberries in a container, cut them up, clean them, cut them up, 
and then throw that uh, some Splenda or sugar in there, and then all the juices and shit come out and it formed. A little lemon. A little bit of lemon if you like, some zest in that shit. Yep. And then uh, put that over top of angel food cake. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit of ice cream. Depends on how cool fat. whip. A little cool whip. Depends on how fat you want to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's my shit. All like time the, like favorite little, summer shit. Like the little angel food cakes. So I like, like the big one that I can cut a piece from. Yeah, I like that better too. I don't like the little cups because then there's too much of a crust. I like the I like the big circular fucking thing. I think the cups are too dry. Yeah, I don't like them. Mm-mm. Don't like them. Not pound cake either. Pound cake is too full of calories and fat and too shit. Too thick. Yeah, angel food cake's very light. Mm-hmm. Very very light. It's like you didn't eat it. Yep. Still leaves room to have a drink at night. Mm-hmm. Functional. <laughs> leaves room for another snack. Like, like I don't know. May, maybe another popsicle. I don't know. Depends. It's just frozen ice. I, <laughs> 35 grams of sugar. It's fine. Fucking, it's like 16 grams of sugar yeah, in that is. bitch. It is. I exaggerate. Like 11. That, that means I can eat three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Burn that off in eight minutes. Outside. I rem- <laughs> in the summertime, <laughs> I will push mow my entire property for cardio in the morning sometimes. I've seen you do it. Yeah. I was like, ah, it's a good day. And Hannah's like, so you're, you're, you're going to push mow. I didn't do cardio this morning. She's like, it's 930. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to push mow this whole fucking thing. I remember I came over the one day. I'm like, wow, he did push mow this entire fucking property. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. It was great. Bro, that one, like the, the part in the, the front of your home, like that, that's a big area. It's way, to be bigger cut. Than, it's way bigger <laughs> than you think. Did you learn that after the first time you did it? You were uh, like, oh, fuck. Five passes in, I was like, I'm nowhere. <laughs> I'm nowhere. And I was like, I was like, I got two choices right now. The first time I did it, I was like, I can stop and just weed whack. Because weed whacking, you're walking like two miles. Yeah. And I was like, I can either stop and just like play it off as like, oh, I didn't want to waste all my time. Or I can just shut the fuck up and do it, yeah. and it'll take like three hours. Yep. So I shut the fuck up and pushed. <laughs> I was like, I can't stop now. How many times do you fill that mower up? Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> it got to the point, like after the first couple passes, that I'm like, all right, no bag. Yeah, no, no bag on this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to work. <laughs> not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, okay, food-wise, though, back to the food. Mm. Summertime, my number one. Thanksgiving or Christmas? Which one? Food-wise. Uh, Thanksgiving. You went Thanksgiving. Christmas. You're going Christmas. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I, have a, I have a problem. I like Easter food as well, like an Easter gathering. Well, you're, you're not going to have it this year. I know. Nobody's allowed to even fucking stand next to each other in there. Uh, <laughs> so I have a problem with Easter or Thanksgiving and Christmas because I love them both so much. My mom always made every – there's something special about every single holiday – I am a Thanksgiving person because my birthday was always celebrated on Thanksgiving as a child. I love it. I love turkey. Love it. Just because of the couple things. It's light. It's not full of fat. I can pretty much eat anything with it. I love pickles. I'm not big on stuffing. and I'm not big on mashed potatoes. Not big on them. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what I like about Thanksgiving other than pumpkin pie and just it being my birthday. My mom making me feel special. So like turkey, some drinks, nice dessert. Yep, that's pretty much it. But Christmas, I fucking love Christmas mm-hmm. because I love ham sandwiches. Yeah. And I love cookies. Yep. So uh, on Christmas, I don't eat pretty much anything but ham sandwiches. Mm-hmm. That's all I eat. Mm-hmm. And I get pretty shit-faced. Yep. That's pretty much my story on Christmas. So I love. <laughs> I will take Christmas over Thanksgiving as an adult, as a child, fucking Thanksgiving, because it was like my special time and nobody else felt as special as I did. I'm being selfish. I love Christmas. But Christmas. I just and, act like a complete child with everything. You're allowed. Like the food, the habits, the fucking. Everything can go out the window. Yep. You're allowed to like, you're allowed to get drunk and watch your kids open presents and everybody's like, oh, there's Uncle Bob. Here, I'll put it together. <laughs> there's Dad Seth. <laughs> <laughs> like it's the greatest thing to like i said with my pep drinking and eating cookies i never knew that alcohol and cookies went together until i started doing it realizing that nothing is better than watching your kids play with all the gifts and you get to have drinks get a little tuned up and eat cookies you see that dude that just t- tagged us in that the other day what he was having a a bourbon and a chocolate chip cookie. No. Yeah, he tagged us. Nice. Yeah, yeah I'm like fucking a- right, dude. I was like, you get it. He's like, 
Yeah, he's like, I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> like, there's nothing better than having a couple cookies uh-huh. and just watching your watching your family do their thing, which you've worked so hard for them to be able to do, mm-hmm. and you enjoy a drink and some cookies. Maybe some sex later. There's nothing better. Christmas is a great time. It is. My question to you is, what's with the Easter? What happens different at Easter than happens at Christmas? Do you do Easter hams? Yeah. Easter ham. Uh, yeah, we'll do an Easter ham... Uh, at least with my family, my uncle Norman would always make uh, a big fillet, like a big tenderloin. On Easter or Christmas? On Easter. Oh, really? Yeah, he would ma- he'd grill like a long, big old fillet mignon. Yep, and then minion. Yeah, that was a big thing. We did that on Easter. No shit. Yeah, because we always I loved going to their house. They always had a nice house. Uh huh. And. I don't know, there was always somewhere to hang out outside, and it was always nice on Easter, generally speaking. Yeah, and, early know, sp- spring, that. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, everyone just hung out on Easter there. Like, it, it wasn't about the presents or all the shit. More of a gathering. Yeah, it was fun. The winter's over, mm-hmm. everybody gets together, the sun's out, nice, little chill in the air, yeah. enjoy the time. Yep. Just enjoy company. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, I like that. What about you, Shane? Yeah, I mean, we just do the Easter ham. Do the Easter ham? Yeah. That's typically what we do, too. Yeah. I mean, I like Easter. Mm-hmm. I like all the holidays. Just Thanksgiving is my favorite. Thanksgiving? Shane's a Thanksgiving guy. Mm-hmm. Are you big on the pumpkin? Yep. Big on yeah, the pumpkin, I love huh? pumpkin pie. Me, too. I do yeah, enjoy the pumpkin I do like pie. it. Mm-hmm. I feel, again, it's very light. I, f- I eat too much of it, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, can, I see myself eating half a pie very easily. Mm-hmm. You know who loves pie? <laughs> Alvin. Yes. Sweet potato pie. Yeah. Alvin, the custom suit guy. Yeah. He, uh, I think he said his mom makes him two, maybe three that mother- personal pies. That motherfucker eats as much as Dean. Those two, yep. those two do compete with each other. Did you see what he made with the fucking My Cookie Dealer thing the other day? Yeah. like A, a fun san- fetty sandwich yeah. with the cookies? Yes. I wanted to say to him, Alvin, they're not fat free. <laughs> I know he works out really hard. He does. He trades his ass you off. You know what? That motherfucker's the reason that I started eating cookies thinking I could take seventh gear and run and yeah. like not get fat. Uh-huh. That fucker is doing that because I... Th- he can take pre-workout any time of day. Bro, that motherfucker takes a scoop of seventh gear and works out at like five o'clock in the morning and sweats his dick off and then eats horrible. And he's still like the same person. I do that... I eat those types of things. I just get bigger. I like live through Alvin and Dean with like food. Like I'm like, oh. I like the, I like tried it. Like I ate cookies this weekend, bro. I just got bigger. I just get bigger. And then like, I start getting fatter after I got bigger. (laughs) There's like a bigness point that I get to. And then like the bigness stops and the fatness starts. Yep. I'm still in okay shape. I just eat a lot. Mm -hmm. I like eating. I miss it. What's your favorite summertime casserole? Summertime casserole? Like uh, 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 like a salad or casserole type thing. Mm. Summertime. Shane, you too. You pasta salad? Kim Taco make, salad? Kim makes this casserole? really this really good like uh, su- like summer salad. Has like it's like really light dressing with different veggies and like sunflower seeds and. Oh, okay, like a nice. Cit- like a citrus vinaigrette. Ah, uh, citrus vinaigrette. On yeah, it. I like that. Yeah, I like that. I'm not a big like baked casserole guy. Me neither. I, I don't like because I'm fat. Yeah. Usually, there's a lot of fat in a casserole. Like butter and may- mayo based shit, or that was an ugly face you made there. I hate mayonnaise. Not a big fan. Me neither. <sighs> I don't like it, bro. I'll I'll eat I'll tr- eat any other condiment but mayonnaise, and I'm not a condiment. You don't guy. eat a lot of condiments. No buffalo sauce barbecue couple salad dressings okay shane you're up my, fuck mustard my mom oh sorry. jesus sorry I really hate mustard he interrupted Gross. you and offended no. my mustard liking <laughs> Cocksucker. my mom makes this really good uh baked uh casserole it's like broccoli cheese rice onion ham oh, it's fire okay. that's what i like in the summer my Ooh. mom makes a, a green rice type of thing mm. or she also makes a fire uh Oh, what the fuck is it called? Cheesy potato thing. Oh, yeah, those She makes two. cheesy potatoes at, the, at yep. the holidays. Those are really fucking good. Yep. I will say that. Fuck. Yeah, that's a that's a Thanksgiving thing she does. Mm. Fucking fire. And then makes one of... She either makes cheesy potatoes on Thanksgiving or or uh, Christmas, 
and green rice on Thanksgiving or Christmas, yep. vice versa, flips them. Mm. Yeah, good times. Yeah. But, yeah, summer. When, I mean, when, when does she make that? Summertime? Yeah, summer. Oh, that's a summertime yeah. thing. Good mm-hmm. stuff. Yep. What do you guys think of Reuben casseroles or like a Reuben sandwich with the corned beef and shit? No. No. I never heard of a Reuben casserole, but I love Reuben sandwiches. Kim loves Reubens. My mom. Being from Philly. I don't fucking eat that shit. Yeah. Never ate it. Never got into it. Can't handle it. Apparently, my mom loves them. And apparently, my mom makes this casserole. It's a Reuben casserole that it gets devoured everywhere she takes it in the summer. Mm. Like, I've known it since I was young. Like, we, my parents used to fucking throw big shit banger parties. Like, in the summertime, they threw big fucking parties every year. Graduation parties at the Ferozzi house were out of fucking hand. Big deal. <gasps> it got a little scary. <laughs> Keg tossing would occur. My dad's a huge yard sports guy. Mm-hmm. My parents have a great flat backyard. Perfect entertainment yard I've ever seen. You name it, they fucking kill it. Yep. Bocce. Yeah. They did. We would do bocce. We would do the bas- that little basketball court setup they yep. have there. Got the pool, like uh, uh, cornhole. You name it, it would be going. They would do horseshoes on the on the long side that yep. goes up on the other side that has that hill part there. Mm-hmm. Horseshoes there. Big shit banger party. So like, and whenever she my fire, my fire cook. Yeah. But yeah, the Reuben casserole. No matter where we went or whenever it came out. All of it would be fucking gone. Mm-hmm. Housed. I was like, it's disgusting. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. Great entertaining. Yep. I love, I, fuck, I love that shit. Mm-hmm. So much fun. Each season and holiday has its own special thing. You I'm do living it right it. now. I'm yep. just like, I'm just soaking it in, especially since we're not allowed to go to parties and like we have to social distance and all that. Mm-hmm. I don't like that. No. I love parties. Used to fucking be like, young and try and steal wine coolers and then drink them and like get sick yep that was awesome Mm -hmm. that was fun my mom whenever we were kids there was like videotapes and uh pictures of us like going and getting bud pounders for her and her friends like at summertime parties there's a picture of my brother huge fucking afro my brother was super tan like he's just dark-skinned italian Mm mm-hmm Huge fucking afro. He's standing in his underwear at a party with like a fucking Bud Pounder because they were having him run and go grab beers. It was awesome. It's a fucking great picture. <laughs> like the perfect picture for a graduation post, you know? Yep. Um, yeah. Dr. Bubba. He's a doctor now. <laughs> Jake was a huge underachiever in high school. He might have smoked a little too much weed. Mm. Okay. He was like a D student in high school. Then he goes to the uh, like the early program at IUP to learn how to study because Jake was a complete fucking just didn't care. Stubborn as fuck, mm-hmm. but not stupid. Okay. Yeah. He goes to, we go to IUP and he went, he had to go up early because they had teach him how to like study and all this shit. Like, like, okay, this kid's a fuck up. <laughs> let's get him. Let's help him get his shit together. That type of thing. Yeah. For lack of a better phrase, me being ignorant. Turns out, Jake doesn't do too good his first year. And it's kind of like, hey, Jake, stop partying. Get your shit together. Jake decides to get his shit together. Okay? Decides. And all of a sudden, Jake starts getting, like, straight A's. Hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on right now? How did you do that? What are you doing? Are you that big of a fucking asshole? (laughs) You mean to tell me 18 years of your life you've been a complete dickhead? Now, Jake is a fucking doctor. He went and got his degree, graduated from IUP, got into New York Chiropractic College, goes to chiropractic school, gets on the dean's list the entire fucking time, Mm -hmm. and is now a doctor. He's a chiropractor. Super smart. Yeah. Like, everybody thought he was the moron of the family because he was. And now, like... He was just ready to kill it. I was, was like, the smart one growing up because I was always in the accelerated classes... This and that and all this. And now I'm just the fucking asshole of the family. <laughs> and Jake's Jake's like, you have a problem? Go see Jake. Mm-hmm. Anything that kid says, I believe. I'm like, yeah, Jake's fucking, he's smart. He was sitting there the whole time going, wait till I turn 20. I'm going to fucking show all of you. Yeah, dude. The kid went from being like, and now like uh, there was the one, he, he treats some of his patients are his teachers. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, and they were like, they're like, so... I didn't think you'd ever amount to anything here. It's funny how that works. <laughs> funny how that works. 
Oh, it's crazy. I was lazy with school. Yeah. I, I mean, I always got good grades, but like I could have gotten perfect grades very easily. Like straight A's, no problem. I just I was lazy. I wonder why. I don't know. I can't just, put my finger on it. It was just something that was kind of impeding you from trying harder at things that you didn't like. I had a bad attitude. Because anything that you did like, you were probably relatively good at it. Yeah, I was 100% in on it. Yeah. Full dick at bitch. Yep. And then, eh, I don't really want to do that. Well, I, I would eventually figure it out. I definitely figured it out in college. Like, if I did this much work... Or did this, or listen to this much of the class? I could get at least a eighty percent. Well, here's and if I mean, you do all the homework, that's an automatic one hundred and fifty points. It goes back to just what we just started this fucking podcast on, and what we built a business upon. I mean, Being a hardworking motherfucker. I think I'm like playing that down quite a bit, j- hey. just because I did what I had to do while in college. Because I, I also worked two fucking jobs. So, like, yeah, I didn't have the time to learn the entire fucking class. I if didn't. If you want me to be bluntly honest right now. Yeah. You might. He won't. He's like, oh, I got to do that. <laughs> it's what we built everything on of being a hardworking motherfucker and what we started this podcast about. Mm-hmm. Bro, the education system isn't built for everybody. It's just built for general education. Yet, they don't teach you life things in school. It's not. The education system, in my, in my opinion, is fucking broken as shit. Like, I use... There are... And everybody that has certain things from the education system does benefit them in life to some degree. I don't have a fix. I don't know how to fix it, so I can't, like, judge it too much. Yeah. But I think it's fucked, generally. Mm-hmm. Because the people like yourself, like, like so many people... They make enough money outside of what they learned in school that uh, they're doing just fine. Like, I'm all over the place because my mind's running a mile a minute right now. Put it this way. There are people that can benefit from not doing what people want them to do in school. Mm -hmm. Construction workers, mechanics, people that just aren't fucking book inclined. Yeah. People that have a reading comprehension of a fucking eighth grader yet can fucking put together a whole entire engine and take it apart and put it back together without reading anything in an instruction manual. Mm -hmm. People that can, uh, people that just have a business mindset or their mind works with numbers, but not with letters. There are a million different things and it's kind of hard because in school, like we're generalizing everybody like, Oh, you're a fucking, you're a fucking D student or your son can't his, he's horrible at reading and comprehension. Well, he doesn't have to be good at reading and comprehension to be successful in life. There's many things in life that that kid can do that doesn't pertain to that. You know? You always should try your hardest, but fuck, man. There needs to be so many more. And that's why I think electives in school Mm -hmm. are very important. That's why I think that Votech is very important. Everybody thought Votech. The Votech kids are a bunch of fucking stoners and morons. Okay, dude, it's okay. Everybody in high school doesn't really know what the fuck they're going to do. Yeah. However, those kids that went to Votech, that became carpenters, that became electricians, that yeah. became plumbers. Yeah, they're building your house. Ooh. They're working in your hospitals. They're... Bro. Mm-hmm. Yep. You, you go to beauty school. All right, yeah. Oh, look at that dumb bitch going to beauty school. She's, she's in Votech this and that. Yeah, five years later, she opened up her own beauty salon and makes fucking 100 Gs a year, mm-hmm. personally. Yep. Has three other chairs. They pay her X amount per month for chair rental. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't teach. It. They don't teach anything like that. So I mean, there's so many different aspects, and I think that you know, as a as a parent, like I don't know what my kids are going to become. I just tell my kids do super good in school, pay attention, do your work, try your fucking hardest. Mm-hmm. At some point, I'm hoping there'll be something that just like clicks. Yeah, and it'll grab them, and that'll be their shit. So I just have to encourage it. And whenever the kids go to do anything, like if they want to try something, I have to create an opportunity for them to try. They fuck up. Great. Grand. Okay. What did you learn? Because just because you just because the education system could be broken or you don't like it or anything doesn't mean that they ever stop learning. Mm -hmm. Life is all about it. Like, fuck, 35 years old. I was 30 years old. (laughs) I wasn't doing what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. People told me, you know, fuck, I was 30 years old and my parents called me stupid. (laughs) 
what the fuck do you think you're gonna do? That's really dumb, Seth. Cool uh, beans. I'll be over here. I'm gonna do it anyway. Be over here doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. I think, and that's I just um, that is what we embody as the all American roughnecks, a bunch of rowdy, uncouth motherfuckers that just live life. And work to be the hardest working motherfuckers they can be for the people that they love in their life. That's it. That's it, dude. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's the beauty of all this. Yeah. Well, I, I've definitely been revisiting those feelings and the, like the the roots of why we started this with everything that's going on too. You know, if if we if we didn't do something beneficial for our community or for our people or for our fans and our customers right now, who who the fuck are we? To, to not do something cool for them or, or, or benefit the, the community. Absolutely. Now, now's that time. And that's the, I, the community, these people in this community are what am, I embody mm-hmm. Western Pennsylvania. Yep. Doing things on a handshake. These are all things that, that, that we, emb- that we've embodied. Mm-hmm. We now have such a following that if you are in this situation, Continue to grind. If you're in, if you're in the negative of this situation, continue to grind. You're going to grow from this. You have to. You, you, you eat the shit and move on. Mm-hmm. If you're someone in the position to help stimulate and do good for your community, be in that. Do those things. Mm-hmm. You know. And I think the great the 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 one big upside to all of this was previous to this, the economy was fucking booming. So I hope that everybody had a nice stockpile of savings and it sucks that it got dug into, but we're digging into ours right now pretty heavily as a company. That's mm-hmm. just how things work. That's yep. what you do. You have to prepare for these types of things. And if you're not prepared, that's how things get eaten up. We're still doing phenomenal, but we need to make sure that our people and everything continues to work. A small community, man. Can't let it go down. I don't want it to. I don't want to. I don't. That's the last thing I want to hear is somebody's out of fucking business. Yep. So, but th- these are the things in life that uh, they're all learning experiences. And fuck, dude, like I said, man, takes us, takes, it takes every level of hard work and motherfucker for this country to run. Mm-hmm. It takes the person that's cleaning the toilets. It takes the person that's running a Fortune 500 company. It takes the person running a small mom and pop restaurant. It takes the person that bought a fucking food chain and owns, you know, is franchised three Chick-fil-A's around here. It takes all these different people for this country to run. It takes the fucking stoner fucking high school kid that's flipping pizzas, dude, at Pizza Hut. It takes every single person to make this work. And nobody can be downplayed because I don't ever want to see people do bad. Even motherfuckers I don't like. Yep. Just because I don't like you don't mean that I don't think you should eat. You're just not eating with me. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing. Like, I don't, have, I don't wish bad upon nobody. I still want you to eat. I still want you fucking your old lady. I still want you going on a vacation. Just not with me. And there's nothing wrong with that. And if people feel the same way about me, that's perfectly fine. But I just don't, I don't want to see, man... Especially young kids in the young, you know, as a, as a kid, you don't ever want to see somebody in a shitty situation. Yeah, I don't ever want to see anybody with their kids getting bad or anything like that. I have yeah. too strong of a connection with with the kids now, especially from gymnastics, and mm-hmm. I know kids are fucking parents, and kids are losing their fucking minds. Mm-hmm. It's tough. It is, but gotta find good to come from it. Have to. You have to. If you fucking don't, dude, it's gonna eat you up. Go yep. watch Tiger King. Yep. Grow Fu Manchu. Try it out. Maybe I should grow Fu Manchu. I think you should try it out. I think if I shave my face into a Fu Manchu, Hannah definitely would not fuck me. I think you should do it and bleach it blonde. <laughs> Just fucking do it. I'm broke as shit. I don't want to change the way I dress. I won't wear a suit. <laughs> I've had some kinky sex. I've done drugs. And fuck Carol Baskin. Bro, he is one far out. The fucking the, my one of my other favorite memes of him was whenever uh, the biggest flex this year was whenever uh, Joe Exotic put on the medical jacket. Whenever that lady got her arm bit off, <laughs> bro, legit put on a medical jacket. Yeah, that was his first thought. Man. Had an accident, jacket goes on. 
Like he had to go get that to put it on. Yes, yeah. he had to go. Like that was a plan. Yeah. Oh, accident. Hold on. Here's the thing. With that motherfucker, it was never about the cats. No. It's For any of those people, it's not about the animals. It's about themselves. Mm-hmm. That's the thing at the end of it, whenever you see it, like as a conserv- as 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 I'm not calling myself a conservationist, but like as someone who is a conservationist, I would imagine they would look at that and go, holy fuck, dude, that's really tough. Mm-hmm. Because not one of those people does it for the animals. It's Everything's money driven. It's mm-hmm. business. You know, you, you always want to be financially set. But man, after learning that dude, like the, like watching the whole series, as you get to it, you're like, fuck, dude. Just, just all about him. It's all about it's all about everybody in there. They like the idea of it all. You know, it's it's tough. Bro, that's some fucking weird people. Bro. Oh, it gets way more fucked up. By you watch it all. Yeah, I, I, I gotta I gotta get through like two more tonight, so I'm on. I guess I'm in it. You're you're you watched one and two, and then we started three. Like I didn't. We're not far into three. Fucking five, six. It's just like, oh my god, this actually occurred. It's like all of a sudden, like very, very fucking wild. Like fucking people were fucking crazy, crazy. Yep. It's terrible too because then you realize you watch like it, it's all fucking roses and blowjobs in the beginning about how cool Joe Exotic is. Yeah. And like how everything looks. And then by the end of it, you realize that it costs X amount of dollars to feed these motherfuckers every day. Mm-hmm. Then you see the numbers of them. Like you hear 1,200 animals on the property. And then whenever you see a herd of tigers look like a herd of cattle hungry, you're like, oh boy. These are beautiful animals that should be mm-hmm. recognized in the wild for what they are. And then when you see them herded together, it's a little fucked up. Yeah. It's tough. Fuck. Because tigers aren't food. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe cows are food. Mm-hmm. I believe deer are food. I believe everything here on this earth was put here for a reason. So as a hunter, you respect the life of everything that you kill and eat. That's why you pray before you eat, mm-hmm. because you thank it for its life. Because if you believe in God or a higher power, everything here has a purpose. So like, you know, if, if everything does, like, why don't we eat horses? Like, you can't eat a horse. It's meat. Back in the day and years and years ago... Like, whenever a horse would die, they would cut the back straps out. And it wasn't out of ignorance or like, oh, no, you have to use the animal to treat it as what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you you thank it for its life. Whenever you kill an animal, it's a very intense feeling. You thank it for its life because it's about to feed your family's life. It's a circle of life. Mm -hmm. Okay? And everybody has their different views upon it. But, um, and whenever you see that, like, tigers aren't food. I believe that that's why I like buying my meat from certain farms. Mm-hmm. That's why we buy meat from certain farms is because yep. it's a different way of life for that animal. Yeah. It's a more respected life. So that means that your steak is not your your ground beef. Your ground beef isn't 4.99 or 5.99. Your ground beef's fucking 8.99 a pound. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's run differently on a different farm that's farmed locally for that reason. Mm-hmm. Am I willing to pay that? Yes. Why? Because I'm in that position financially. Same thing goes for everything else. And, you know, whenever you hunt and you kill a deer, you kill anything, thank it for its life. It has a purpose. Mm-hmm. And w- watching that, I'm a little fucked up. It's like the big game hunting. I'll do the big game hunting thing. Mm-hmm. I understand it and how it's worked from a conservation standpoint in Africa, a place I've never been mm-hmm. that obviously needs that type of activity to occur for certain reasons. It's a whole different conversation. But, like, no, that was, it was, it's, by the end, it's pretty fucked up to watch. Fuck. Bro, it was yeah. like, there's like a herd of fucking 50 tigers together, hungry. It was really wild to watch. Mm-hmm. Like, looks like they're ready to fucking eat each other. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't mind tigers like that being in captivity, especially if they're dangered, endangered. Like, just to get the numbers back up. But there should be, which I think there are, I think, I don't know, certain requirements. Like, you need a x amount of acres you need an x amount of food you need like there should be checks like it needs to be regulated yes but how do you get those tigers back into the wild? yeah there needs to be a program for that as well but i'm not PETA. i'm not 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and, like, like, I, oh, like let's take a, a tiger that we had born mm. in in to a domesticated environment and put it out into the fucking jungle. It'll get eaten alive. <laughs> It won't know how Literally. to survive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's that's it's a tough. And, and then that goes back to what do you believe? Do you believe that just uh, things are going to go uh, like it's just the way this occurs mm. in nature? Like humans will. I mean, just same thing with elephants. Like they fucking take them for their for their tests. Yeah. I don't know what to tell. I don't know. I'm not there. I I'm not involved enough. But mm. boy, is it a fucking wild scenario. Everything's yeah. money driven and and yeah, we we might be yes, afraid of tigers in the wild because yeah, they will eat you. Or yeah, they're endangered. We need to save the species like it, I don't know. But then it's, that, it's that goes, argument. oh, what are we going to play God and we going to we going to play God and make sure that they exist? What exactly. about what about woolly mammoths? Mhm. Mhm. Yep. Saber-toothed tigers. They're pretty cool. It were big as fuck. It was wild. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the answers. I just know how to lift weights, mm-hmm. eat steaks, get jacked, have a huge dick. I just stick to what I'm good at. Yeah. That's it. Double down. Double down on them. I double down on my strengths, and then I learn a little bit about my weaknesses and put people in positions that can handle it, like Hannah. Yep. She can handle a 12-inch penis pretty well little scary how well though yeah i think she had practice before me hmm. fuck well it's okay though same team <laughs> we're on the same team yep. same goal <laughs> win <laughs> <laughs> my life is really fucking cool though I love my life. I have a good time with it. I yeah. really do, man. I really have a good time with my life. Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. Work really hard to get here. And, uh, uh, you know, fuck. I joke around a lot. You know, we are complete fuck-offs. Yeah. Most of the time, like, whenever we're, we're, we're hanging out and everything. But when it comes to fucking work, dude, I don't think me, there's, gonna, there's not many people I know that will fucking outwork us. When it's time to fucking lay, lay it down, it's like, okay. Like, that's what we're good at. I'm very good at that. That's what, and it's it's... I, I really enjoy it. I'm bad at stopping. I like, I, there's nothing better than me than a challenge I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like when I find something I really want to do, the challenge that's involved, I get so excited. Because mm-hmm. then that means it's like, oh, it's time for me to spread my wings and fly. Let's fucking go. Yeah. It's like I look back at the gymnastics thing and think like building that fucking thing. Like I was like, oh, like I enjoy this. This is something I want to do because it's for Hannah, it's for the girls, it's for the community, Mm -hmm. and I have 60 days to open it up. So you're saying there's a chance. I look at all the, I look at all the stress we put on our on ourselves over the last four years. It it blows my mind every time. I love it. That specifically. That was a wild one. That was a bro. That was. Last year, this time. Yeah, last year, this Fucking time. Fucking mayhem right now. Oh, yeah. Fuck, it was a year ago, huh? Yep. Last year, this time, uh, yeah. April 10th, we signed the agreement. April 10th was when I was like, okay. Hey. Because like, we were looking at a bunch of buildings, and like that's all we were doing was just looking, looking, looking. And then you're like, hey, probably going to get this building. I'm like, oh, fuck, we're, actually, we're going through it. We're doing it. I put everything on the line. I know. Sign my life away again. Yep. <laughs> my, my, I love the shit my dad would say to me too. Yeah. You're doing what? What the fuck do you need that for? Bro. Well, this is how this is gonna work. Well, I remember like you were telling, well, I'm meeting with this guy. You know, he has he has some used equipment up here, but probably gonna end up buying brand new because it's faster. And this guy's really nice. Met him. I'm like, holy fuck! I was in it. Yeah, you were. But that's that's how it works. You got to be like that. Yeah. Because if you don't take a chance, you'll never know if you're gonna if, if it could ever work. Mm-hmm. And I hate fucking woulda, coulda, shoulda. Yeah. Live like that too long. Mm-hmm. I'll take a fucking chance on myself. Yeah. I'll take a chance on my people. For sure. Fucking right. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run shit into the ground too. I won't. I I I don't like. Uh, see, this is weird with me too. This is a little personal right now. I've already done bodybuilding. Bodybuilding doesn't, I love following it. I love it, but I don't like doing it that much. That's one of the reasons I just, I don't have like a passion to do it. Mm -hmm. I did it. I want to do more things with my life. 
I love following it because I'm still fascinated with everybody. Love yeah. supporting it and all the guys and talking to them because they're in it. I still love it, but I personally don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. I like flexing in the mirror. Yeah. And I like looking good naked. I still ha- like like it, but I don't love it enough for me to do it. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because I had to backtrack because of my health. Like I can't take the drugs no more. Can't yeah. do that. So that's why I'm enjoying the running. That's why I enjoy just lifting weights and being functional and trying new things. And I, I, I will always love it, but I fucking love business and I love a different challenge. Mm-hmm. I love it. And that's what, I mean, drives me with everything. Like you can't, you can't fucking, there's not a feeling in the world better than succeeding at something that you never thought you could succeed at. Mm-hmm. There legitimately is not a better feeling in my opinion. Like I, I'm, I succeeded at, building a fucking gymnastics facility that I knew really know nothing about and figured it out, had Hannah on the lead and you next to me and everybody that was supporting me. But I was like, I'm going to fucking do this. And it was like, and that this warehouse was empty as fuck and shitty looking. It was bad, man. I didn't see it. I didn't see it the first time we walked through it. And the fact that it occurred and how it went down was the, wildest Mm -hmm. feeling I had. I remember, bro, whenever we were building the pit and finalizing this bitch, I could have slept here. Mm -hmm. I could have slept here. It was wild. I remember every weekend, because those guys worked weekends. Yeah. Sunday night, 10.30, 10.45. I see you on IG, I'm like, oh, fuck. (laughs) Like a long, long one. It's awesome. I, I love he, that shit. I wonder what he's going to be like in the morning. <laughs> I that uh, I, bro. That um, I, and the thing is, is I I enjoy learning about new things. Mm-hmm. I just like you know, I, I don't know. It fascinates it, me. Yeah, it makes me. And like I said, the success from the success from doing something or succeeding at something that you didn't think you'd ever do mm-hmm. or you got a passion for all of a sudden and did it and then me succeeding at it, bro, that just, it, the feeling I had, I'm like, oh man, I love it. And it's because I failed. <laughs> I failed so many fucking times so I know what the fuck that tastes like. Mm-hmm. So the success, I mean, it's, it's that thing. You just you can't get enough of it. Yeah. Bet on yourself. Bet on your people. Get really good motherfuckers around you. Go balls deep and never. I mean, there's one thing that I will say about everybody, the four of us at this company is the fact that one of the biggest reasons we get along so well is there will be no bigger critic than ourselves about a problem that we had with something in our realm. Yep. Like, you're, I can't be any harder on you than you are on yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. Nor can you be on me. Yeah, I mean, if, if one of us fucks up, nothing has to be said nothing because i'm like fuck he feels way worse the only thing that will be said i will be more concerned about your well-being of what you're doing to yourself yeah right than me fucking losing it Mm -hmm. like there's no there's no way i could whenever there's a problem and if you if you cause the problem i'm gonna be like hey dude you cool Mm -hmm. like we'll get we'll get through it yeah that's how we handle it it's crazy because there's no worse feeling that one of us could feel other than what we're doing to ourselves yep it's crazy. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that I, people were talking about essential employees, like not essential and essential employees. That's a joke. That is a big thing with, with, uh, with, with an essential employee. And that's why, you know, people get paid accordingly. It should be paid accordingly at companies because, you know, like, for example, Shane, like when Shane fucks up, dude, I don't think I can make Shane feel worse than he probably makes himself feel. Yeah. That, that puts you into a different category. Mm-hmm as an employee for sure yeah <laughs> i forgot that was only a year ago yeah oh man bro i remember that like it was a wild time for me oh fuck! i, I mean i know it was a wild time for all of us but like i was like there could not be more going on at this point in time with Everything else we got going on. Building a com- building we- multiple companies and, and building an entire facility and opening up a brand new one. And we w- need to open up a brand new business, which we're good at, in 60 days or less. And have it be ready for 
little little kids to come in with their parents and everything be okay in there. I was like, okay. I was like, I can do the electronic stuff. I can do the I can do the business stuff. I can do the website. I can do all that. I'm gonna put the boots and the cargo shorts on and go to work. <laughs> Seth's gonna do to all the physical shit. Oh my God, <laughs> it was crazy. It it all happened like like in an after hours type setting. I didn't see any of it. Like most of it occur. You know, because like you guys were here nights and weekends and we were still doing everything else. And that was this. That was the thing that changed Hannah and I's relationship. Yeah. It changed how we how we handle each other and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it was big. That was whenever she realized that's whenever I became an animal. And she's like, I was like, things are going to get a little different around here. I'm going to get shit done. (laughs) Okay. no, no. I don't want to hear a fucking thing come out of your mouth about anything. Hmm. What? Wait, why am I in trouble? <laughs> You're not in trouble. You're not. I'm just I'm telling you how, going the fuck, in. I'm, how the fuck this is going to go. I'm going in, all right? You're telling me to build this. I was like, how about June 30th? No. It's fucking three weeks later. June 8th. Uh, June 8th. Yes. If you can't do it by June 8th, it's not worth it. And then she'd have a good reason. Mm-hmm. You're like, fuck. Fuck, kind of right. All right. All right, dude. Bob, we need to move this up two weeks. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> fuck me. All right, let me get on this training. <laughs> I got trained on that software the weekend before we launch. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're like diamonds. We work really well under pressure. We're formed under pressure. Is that how diamonds are formed? I don't know. I heard it. it sounds book. right. In a book. I read it. I know diamonds are strong. Yeah. Can cut glass. <laughs> I wonder what Shane thinks of us today. How many times, like, a podcast are you just like, Jesus? Fuck. Yeah, like, <laughs> how the fuck 15. Did, how the fuck do these guys actually pay me? How am I working for them? <laughs> Di- diamonds are formed under pressure. I knew it. Yep. I, like I said, we all have our roles at this company. The four of us. I mean, it's just it, that, that's why it's really, really fucking. It's why it's really tough to. Uh, I mean, we're, we tough stay to beat in, us. Yeah, yeah stay in the fucking is. lane, dude. Yeah. yeah, I go. I am. I will say this in a meeting. I am the exact person that you are listening to right now. Yes, I really don't give a fuck <laughs> no. because I know I know that uh, that I know who we are as a people. We all have very good hearts. Mm-hmm. Like we all have, there isn't, there is not one of us have any ill intentions for each other, for ourselves, for our customers, for anybody. It is legitimately we want to make this place a better place. We want to make the industry a better place. Any deal that we do, motherfucker, this deal is going to get done based upon you and me making money together. We produce some of the greatest products in the game. I want you to make money and I want to make money. Otherwise, why the, what's, it, what's, the, what's the point of a business deal? Mm-hmm. I want the person that's going to be on this end, on that side of the table, and on this side of the table, we both have to make money. Otherwise, it's not worth doing. If it's a one-sided deal, it's going to be short-lived. Fuck that noise. I want, I want your kid to have the kung fu grip. I want your wife to have a big rock on your finger. I want you to go on vacation and get sweet blowjobs. I want you to live a great life. And you should feel the same about me. And if you don't feel that way, I'm going to tell you to go fuck yourself. Legitimately. <laughs> <laughs> but that's life, man. That's supposed to be the good shit. Why mm-hmm. can't it be done that way? I don't like none of them deals. Mm-mm. And I legit say that in meetings. You do. <laughs> couple times said it <laughs> and then, oh, it makes a lot of sense you're allowed to yeah I'm supposed to i thought that's how it worked like i thought like kung fu grip crazy great christmases sweet vacations if you're not getting great blowjobs and having good sex on vacations you need to reevaluate your life and if you're not waking up every single day thinking i'm gonna face fuck the day and go make money and work hard for the people I love, you need to reevaluate your life. If you are not doing those things, I don't know what to tell you other than 
change, like you got to start thinking different. Mm -hmm. You got to start daydreaming, bro. You got to start thinking about the good shit. Every time, like you got to, I don't know, like I, I have this visualization of life and all the great shit. Vacations. Outdoor parties. Like I don't want to fight. I want to fuck. Like I want the good shit. I want my life to fuck. That's how you should think every day. You should think like, why, why am I waking up and bitching about fucking work? No, you shouldn't wake up and bitch about work. You should think, wake up and think how much better you're going to get at work so you can make more money, so your family can do better, so you can buy the truck you want to, you can buy the family vehicle for your family, you can take your kids on the vacation, you can go to the fucking exotic place with you and your wife, you can get the weekend getaway together, you can buy her the purse, the shoes, she can get her hair done the way she wants to, all that great shit. That's what you should be thinking about. You should be thinking about, oh, you shouldn't work for the weekend. Fuck you, I do work for the weekend so I can sit on my back porch, which is really fucking nice, and get a sweet blowjob. I work for the fucking weekend. Not for the fucking party. I work for the peace that my family and I have. I work hard so I can live in a place where I can throw football with my kid in the front yard. I work hard so I can spend my weekends with my family. Fuck you, I work for the weekend too. I work for the fucking vacations. I do work a lot on the weekends too, but the quality, the time that I do spend with my family is quality. Yep. That was, that was really intense there. When you said to take your wife to an exotic place, I thought you were going to say Joe Exotic. I thought so too. No, 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 no. Like he doesn't like women. He's <laughs> He's yeah, in he the I thought you were going to say take yourself to some exotic cats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No. Same thing. That's how he drags people in. Yeah. He's like, hey, I have some drugs and baby tigers. If I was 19, I might have sucked a dick too. I'm, I don't know. I'm coming in. Let's go. <laughs> Sweet. Can I touch that tiger? I can hold it? Yeah, I'm just going to get naked first. All right? <laughs> Here's some matter. All right. All right, cool. Hey, babe, this guy's got tigers. He's naked, but it's cool. It's cool. Don't worry about his dick. It's out. Yeah. It's all going to a good, good cause. Charity. I mean, imagine if you were, imagine, imagine if you had that, you could legitimately get naked and have baby tigers around you and nobody would give a fuck because of the baby tigers. Mm -hmm. That really happened. Happened? Whew. Well, all right. Moving on. End of the podcast with Ask the Internet, answer the internet questions from Barstool Sports Card Game. Shane has uh, some questions that he picked out of a hat. Or the deck. Um, and we have no idea exactly what they say. But we're going to go forward with it. And uh, these are not to be taken serious. These are fun questions that are over the top, out of hand. You're supposed to enjoy them. Ask your friends, your family, your mom, your dad, your cousin, your sister, your brother, grandpa, grandpa, priest, pastor. Ask anybody these fucked up questions and see what they respond. Send texts. You can't talk to anybody in person now, so send some texts. Maybe an email. Be good, too. Or just send the link over. I don't know. Don't get naked, though. Or get naked. Or maybe get naked and ask the questions. Fuck it. Let's FaceTime everybody. Naked. I've done that before. Have you? Fuck yeah. Nice. I've done lives naked before. People just didn't know it. They had no idea. No idea. No pants on the whole time. <laughs> we should start video gaming naked. And not streaming. No, no, no. Not streaming. We're just going to take it and film it. We're going to videotape it live, online. People can talk to me as I'm playing video games. Yep. Hmm? It's this new thing I thought of. Yep. You guys ready? <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Let's <laughs> fucking go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Pull the internet. If you were reading the story of your life and you got to the present day, would you keep reading knowing you can't change anything you read? <sighs> Like, so if I continued reading, I was going to see what was going to you occur. You are reading the future. And and it's unchangeable. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. So you would read that what's going to happen in five minutes or in a day, next week, mm -mm. you're going to read your future. That's a big no for you. Big no. Big no. Yep. Not even a little curious. I would get to this point that I'd be reading the, us talking right now in the podcast room and I'd... Close that bitch up. I don't want to know shit. 
you're one of the people that like don't know if you're going to die or when you're going to die or what you're going to die of or how you're going to die. Mm-hmm. You don't want to know none of that. None of it. Me neither. I don't want anything skewing my decision making or my anything. Like, I don't want anything fucking with me. Already enough shit going on in my head. Yep, closing that bitch up. I don't think I... uh, One of the big things for me is I didn't even know that this is where I was going to be. I never could have guessed it. Never. Never in my life could I have guessed. This was only hopes and dreams of doing certain things, let alone leading me to this point and becoming this person. Living through all the fucking wild shit I ever did. I don't know what's going to happen, and that's part of the great thing about life and the reason I take chances on myself and my people. Mm-hmm. I love the anticipation. you got to take life pretty serious. you got to take your actions and what you do and how you do things very serious, especially if people depend on you. But you can't take yourself so serious where you get wrapped up and become an anxious fucking mess. Mm-hmm. Still got to live. Yep, That's the part that I love. I love the living part because I've made a lot of decisions on – Fucked up things, made a lot of mistakes, but I got out of them and I love my life and I like who I am. So I don't want to read shit. Nope. I'd be terrified. What about you, Shane? I'm not reading. Not reading? Nope. How, is that a poll the internet thing? Did people answer that? Oh, yeah. Oh, what was the percentage? Uh, 62% said no. No. Oh, mm. man. 38%, 38% of people were like, yeah, I want to hear. That's no, way no. High. They wouldn't read it. What? 62% would not read it. Yeah, so 38% would want to. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I they, thought you they, said 64. Yeah, no, they want to. They want to. That's that's still a pretty significant number. Mm-hmm. I was expecting a higher number. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. Mm-hmm. All right, going on. All right, debate the internet. Who would win in a battle royale? 30 midgets or one full-grown lion? Oh, the lion. The, the Wait, do the midgets have anything? Have any weapons? No, they're just wearing tank tops, and they look like little uh, Frank Sinatra's that on this one, card. That <laughs> Frank Sinatra? Yeah, sorry to God. Do you know who Frank Sinatra is? I do. I he sang to songs. I guess a little bit. A I'm, little mini uh, Frank Sinatra's. I'm taking the lion. Yeah. All right. Listen, you're over there beating fucking kids over the head with baseball bats thinking you can take like 160 out. 150. I don't think these midgets stand a chance against a full-grown 450-pound lion. There's 30 of them. Yeah, but they're all trying to fight each other, too. No, they're trying to kill the lion. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, no, that them 30 midgets ain't hitting. They ain't. Okay. I don't think I... I don't think I could handle a back leg of a lion, dude. I don't think Bob and I and you could handle one back leg of a lion. There may be an advantage at being a midget and attacking a tiger. Or what is it, a lion? A lion. Who'd win in a fight, a tiger or a lion? Lion. Shane? I like tigers. It's not about what you like. It's about what's going to kill the other. Full-grown lions are 420 pounds. Full grown tigers like seven. What the? I'm not. I, I don't care about weights. I do. Five hundred pounds. Tigers winning. No way. I thought it was bigger than that. Maybe that was like a Siberian tiger that was seven hundred. Tigers. Pounds. See, tigers are too uh, high maintenance. They're not gonna. A lion's gonna come in and just rip your throat out. I'm gonna take the tiger. I think. I think I'm taking a tiger over What does the, the lion. Google machine say? Tiger versus lion. Who wins? Who wins? Fight. Yeah, look, they, who would who win? win? Larger, stronger than the lion. Uh, when a tiger fights, he fights to kill, not just to push aside someone to get better food. Tiger would win. Look at, look at Shane. If there's a fight, the tiger would win every time. Lions hunt in pride, so it would be in a group, and the tiger, as a solitary solitary creature, is a solitary creature, would be on its own. Ti- tiger's generally physically larger than a lion. So you're saying a liger would beat them both? Yeah, probably. Hmm. You know who the king of the jungle is? The tiger. Is it? No. Oh, the lion the is. Lion. <laughs> but the lion doesn't live in the jungle. 
So it's, so it's all a fictitious statement. See, the lions are the king of the savannah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all of a sudden, you're Mr. Geography Shane. Jesus. He is a little bit of a nerd. I didn't know he was into geography and, like... Taking a tiger. I used to... Lo- I used to. Th- I mean, if I w- could be one of them, I would definitely love to be a lion with a lion's mane. Yeah. Like, like fucking Mufasa. I think I think the lion's winning. It's fine. Right. Just my yeah. pi- my All opinion. Right. Maybe I'll be the tiger and you can be the lion and we'll get I'll, naked and wrestle. I'll beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> fucking a sick man. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, damn it. All right, last one. Pull the internet. Wait, what was the other question? It was just who would win a tiger or midgets. Oh, the lion. Or the lion the or lion midgets. Would eat the midgets. The tiger sure. would win it all. Yeah. yeah. All right. Pull the internet. Bob, Bob you, says, Bob's taking the midgets. Yeah, I, I am. We're going to line this up. We're going to see if there's 30 midgets willing to fight a full-grown wild lion. <laughs> you find me 30 motherfucking grown yeah. men that want to get together and fight a fucking lion. I'll find them. N- yeah, hand-to-hand combat with a fucking lion. I got at least 20 people I could call right now. <laughs> you don't you got know a 20 guy. midgets. <laughs> <laughs> Bob knows a guy. I got a, Bob, I got a, I got a guy that likes to fight. He's a midget guy. I'll fight anyone. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Moving on. Right. You, <laughs> you bang a slump buster, and she borrows your favorite shirt for the walk home. Do you a let her go, let the shirt go, or b bang her again to get your shirt back? <laughs> so hold on a second. What was what was the definition of this individual? A slump buster. A slump buster. Got to bust out of that slump, bro. It's you got to just you hit something. A slump buster is an unattractive person with whom one has sex only in order to break a sexual slump. Thank God he found a slump buster. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gotta get that out of the way. So, all right. How... But she steals your shirt. Yeah. Your favorite shirt. Number one, I would never let that occur. Yeah. A... I won't let that let that occur. I rarely Two. wear my favorite shirt. <laughs> oh, do you guys both have the same favorite shirt since you wear the same shirts all the time? Probably. These are my favorite shirts. It's the simple tees. Absolutely. Mm. Um What is what's the what's the number on a slump buster? Like it's on a track. Oh, more like one to ten. One to ten. Probably what a six. No, probably like a four point two. Oh fuck. Yeah. Unattractive. That's a really bad pizza score, bro. Yeah. I'm jerking off still. <laughs> yeah. But this is about getting the shirt back. Yeah. With a second. No, 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 no. I'm not putting myself in no position to fuck no four twos. Let's say you were Boom. accidentally put in that position. I'm not going to be accidentally put in that position. Four twos are really low score. I'm gonna say that there are many people continuing to jerk off until at least a six, six five. Yeah. Fuck, kind of look. Are you disagreeing? I'm, no, I'm. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of the whole situation here. Yeah, I'm still pounding my pud. No, I I don't think anyone's taking that away from <laughs> you. you just say? <laughs> what, did, what was like that? Pounding mud or something. I don't know. Pounding your pud. <laughs> Who the fuck says that? <laughs> what the fuck is that? You still in there pounding your pud, little boy? <laughs> <laughs> is that a boomer Western PA thing? I got no fucking idea. You're like, actually, I don't know. I've never said that before. <laughs> Just make that up. Did you think of that on your own? Do you know who I grew up with, for Christ's sakes? Yes. Greg Ferrosi. That man says more fucked up dumb shit than anybody I've ever met. Yeah. I am a fucking spitting image of that man. You are. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Do you look it up? Look yeah. it up. Pud pounding, beating off, rubbing one out, knocking down a chub. Knocking down a chub. Beating root. That one I don't get. I don't get that one. A.W. is an expert at putt pounding. He will never get any pussy. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yep. Oh, man. 
Uh, wait, what was the question? Oh, the four, the four two. No, I'm still beating my meat until I get to. Uh, that until... wasn't the question. No. I know. All right, so the... she's a six. Six. Yeah, and she took your shirt. And she took my shirt. Yeah, this is my pay... favorite shirt. Yep. Yeah, I'm going back. Okay. I'm getting that motherfucker back. I may go back even if it's like lower. I need the shirt back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably there's there's one. Is it shirt. a hoodie or a shirt? It's a shirt. It's like a t-shirt. Yep. Or a button down. T-shirt. There's a shirt that I'm not letting go. It's not happening. I'll have it forever. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think I, I know which one it is. Nobody ever sees me wear it. <clears throat> nobody see, and, and it's just it's, yeah. Nobody sees me wear it. It's my fucking shirt. If that bitch had it, there's no way she's getting it. Number one. <laughs> oh, is it? The, is it your night shirt? Mm-hmm. Yep, it's a night shirt. It's not. I think it, I know which one it is. It's an it's an AAR shirt. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Black on orange. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Black on orange uh, shirt. Yep. Is it a three X? Uh, no, it's a two X. Mm. That's three years old. Mm. Very stretched out. It never goes back to the original size. The neck's still a little stretched out and bacon shit. neck. Yeah, I I love it. It looks dirty whenever I put it on. Favorite shirt. Just you just like it. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't know why. I don't know what. But it's my favorite shirt. Hmm. I'm gonna steal it. You steal it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say something really bad. <laughs> <laughs> You want to know what I was going to say? I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, sure. I don't know. It was the first thing that came to my mind because it's something I would say to anybody but you or my people. You steal it, I'm fucking your wife. (laughs) (laughs) This is something you'd say. The movie, the movie, the campaign. (laughs) You get my son to call you dad. Fucking your wife. <laughs> what is that? Is that, is that, a, is that a, from the book of bad ideas? <laughs> yep. Yep. Look through. <laughs> call my, my son, call you dad. Fuck your wife. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking one of the greatest parts of that movie. <laughs> Get my son to call you daddy. Fucking your wife. <laughs> Oh, man. Yep. Keeping the shirt. <laughs> Put my head in the icebox. <laughs> you remember that movie? I don't. I can't reference it like that. <laughs> oh, man. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. All right, everybody. Well, that was a hell of a day. Yeah. Good times. Good start to the week. Yep. All right, everybody. I appreciate you guys listening. Remember, be your best self. Goal of every single day that you wake up, whether you're in a time of this quarantine, so- social distancing, or or you are waking up face fucking the day with your job. Be the best motherfucker you can be. Don't be afraid to be you. Don't be afraid to, afraid to try new shit and double down on all the, everything that you're good at. Be a good motherfucker. Right now, people need, people need good. People don't need the bullshit. They need you to be the best person you can be. So be that person, whether it's at home with your family, whether it's you at your job, whether it's you uh, uh, inputting into this into your community, do everything to the best of your ability. We need it more than ever. We need unity as a community and as a country. Be a part of that. Be a fucking badass American patriot. Fucking A.